Good morning, everyone, and thank you very much for joining us today at the Virtual Planning and Development Management Committee for today, the 20th of October. Um, just going to get straight on with the business today, um, but before I do, I just wanted to um, make a quick comment that Callum Petrie, um, who has worked for the Council for 17 years, I believe, who has been uh, the name on many a report, but uh, always behind the scenes, is leading us at the end of the week. So I just wanted to make a quick comment to say all the best to Callum. Um, thank you very much indeed for all your service over the last 17 years um, and all the reports that you brought forward and uh, you, you will be missed. Um, but the best of luck and um, thank you very much indeed. So just a quick comment from, from the committee to say thanks for everything you've done. Um, okay, so I'm going to introduce the top table. Um, there's myself, there's Councillor Bob Braun, who is my Vice Convener, um, Mr. Christian Smith, the Development Management and Building Standards Service Manager, Mrs. Anne Conliffe, um, a team lead in the Planning and Development Department, uh, same with Jamie Scott, who's also a team leader, Mr. Jeff Fogg is with us from uh, Legal, and Mr. Danny Williams from Committee Services. Um, we're well used to this now, but um, I'm back to the usual stuff. If you could attract my attention by using the meeting chat, please. Um, it's very important that you use that. I will not have everybody in front of me, so could you use the meeting chat? We're well versed with it now, um, so please use that. Also, I have to remind the committee that if you lose um, link to the, the, the committee meeting in any shape, form or size, um, you'll need to make a decision yourself as to whether you have enough information to be able to vote if the application goes to a vote. Um, and can you please put a notification into the chat so that we can see if you lose connection in any way. Um, okay, um, I'm now going to go straight to the clerk to uh, oh, a comment from Councillor Simpson. Please, Councillor Simpson. If, if I may convene, it would be an appropriate yeah. point to, to mention um, perhaps we would want to record our disappointment at councillors who apologise but um, fail to find a substitute. I think given the size of this committee and the importance of the decisions, the importance particularly to the applicants, it's unfortunate that um, it seems that um, members are unable to find substitutes. I don't know if we need to look at training up some more uh, keen keen councillors to step in or whether we need to look at those who uh, serve in this committee. But I note over the last uh, few meetings, there's been a number of apologies and not an equal number of substitutions. Your point is well made, Councillor Simpson. There has been online training for all councillors to access um, because of the restrictions due to COVID. We are all doing everything virtually. We know that that uh, option is there for people. So um, there should be. Um, and uh, your point is well made. So thank you for making it. And uh, since you brought us neatly on to that, I'm going to ask uh, <laughs> um, Mr Williams to um, come forward with any um, apologies. Thank you. Uh, yes, convener. Uh, we have apologies submitted today from councillors Gray, Reed, and Williamson. Okay, thank you. Right, so um, we're now moving on to declarations of interest. Are there any declarations of interest on the applications in front of us today? Thank you. Nothing is coming forward on the chat, so um, thank you very much for that. And can I ask that uh, the committee is happy to hear deputations? The deputation is for item 512. Agreed. Agreed. Thank you, Councillor Wilson, and uh, thank you very much for uh, Councillor Brock. Thank you. OK, so we are Moving on to the minutes of the previous meeting. And again, I, I can happy to take that silence means that we're in agreement, but can I have agreement of the minutes of the Planning and Development Management Committee from the 22nd of September? Agreed. Thank you very much. Okay, so they are agreed. And that takes us swiftly on to the applications in front of us today. So the first application is a major application. Um, it's to modify condition seven on open space and parkland of permission granted 17 FLM land 300 metres southwest of Lateral Farm in Kinross. 
Um, oh, my apologies. I'm going merrily through this and I haven't checked who's here. So before we go on to this, yes, um, could would it be possible if um, Mr Williams could do a roll call of the attendees? Thank you. Uh, yes, thank you, convener. Um, usual process members, uh, if you want to read your name, you can let me know whether you're, you're here in the meeting. Um, as I say, we've got apologies from councillors Gray, Reid and Williamson, and just confirm there's no substitutes there. So, um, Councillor Barnacle. Present. Thank you. Councillor Brown. Present. Uh, oh, sorry. Yeah, it's Councillor, uh, well, I'll tell you that as Councillor Brown and Councillor Brock both in the meeting there. Apologies, sorry. Yeah, okay. Um, Councillor Illingworth. Present. Thank you. Councillor James. Morning, Danny. Yep, yeah, present. Thank you. Um, convener, we've heard from yourself, so Councillor McEwen. Uh, present. Thank you. Councillor Simpson. Present. Thank you. Councillor Walters. Present, Danny. Thank you. Uh, and Councillor Wilson. Present. Okay, so that um, should be everyone um, here who's meant to be here, convener. Thank you, and uh, my apologies, everybody. In, in a rush to get on and make sure that we get onto the applications, I was a little bit remiss there, so my apologies. Um, so as I've already read that out, I'm actually going to just go to this uh, major application and if we could ask Mr uh, Scott to speak to the report. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. I'll take committee through some stills to provide the context of the application and an overview of the proposals. But firstly, I just wish to provide an update to committee for this item. This is to confirm what was previously circuit circulated sorry, to members yesterday. Um, essentially, the update relates to the planning history of the site and the effect this has on the determination of this application. The update relates, so relates to para 30 on page 9 of the papers. So that's the planning history for planning application 19 slash 00917 FLM. That uh, paragraph summarised that the Department of so the Director of Planning and Environmental Appeals were minded to grant the appeal subject to the conclusion of a section 75 legal agreement. But since the 18th of October, that legal agreement has actually now been signed and the decision has been issued by the DPEA. So Planning Permission 19.00.917 FLM is now approved and is therefore an extant planning permission. In terms of what this means for the planning application, that decision was anticipated, so it doesn't alter the assessment or recommendation of approval for this application being considered today. It is, however, in the interest of consistency, considered appropriate to reflect this new extant permission within some of the recommended planning conditions by adding reference to that permission alongside other extant permissions. So there are two updates to two separate conditions. The first, sorry, the second update would be condition three on page 15 and the update three would be condition five on page 16, where reference is made to the application references, we're simply proposing to insert the reference and 19 slash 00917 FLM, just to ensure consistency across all of the planning permissions for the Lathro Farm site. Turning back to the consideration of this application, I can clarify that the section 42 application, uh, extant permission is in place as highlighted earlier. So the principle of development being, is not being considered and no changes to the scale and location of the previously approved development are proposed here. Instead, as summarised in paragraph two on page five of the papers, the application seeks to amend condition seven of the existing planning permission, which is a technical change to the specification for landscaping. So what's being proposed is to retain surplus soil from the construction of the residential development at Lathro and to use that to form bund areas within the open space in the country park area. This application is therefore only seeking changes to the existing planning condition and there are no amendments beyond the conditions that are set out on the recommendation pages of the report. I'll now take committee through some stills to provide context of the proposals. So this first still just confirms the location of the Lathro Farm site, which is located to the north and forms an extension to Kinross. In the southern part of the site, you'll see the extent of the now completed phase one development, which is evident, and phase two, which is noted in the drawings uh, and is subject of the recent approval for that planning permission just issued, would be developed to the north and northwest of phase one, largely within the greenfield areas that are visible within this aerial shot. The remaining of the remainder of the site, sorry, is undeveloped land and open space, a paddock area, and also the country park, which is subject to the application today for the uh, amendments to the landscaping. 
Moving now to the site location plan, this is just showing on an ordnance survey base. Um, the red line boundary marks the full extent of the lateral farm site and the site area denoted in blue identifies the specific area of land within which the landscape area in the country park would be subject of the changes to the, the land levels. So I'm now going to show some further stills just detailing that landscaping proposal. This still shows the approved open space and landscaping plan from the Extant Planning Commission, which was granted from the 2017 application. So as you can see, there's a paddock area of grazing land to the west, and there's a large area of open space in the form of meadow, woodland and an acoustic bunding, which runs along the western boundary of the site from north to south. Moving now to the next still. This is the proposed landscaping plan. So the first matter to highlight on this plan is that the red hatched areas represents the extent of the area identified in the flood risk assessment as being at risk of flooding. So within these areas, no level changes or bundings are proposed. Instead, the changes for bunding are solely within the meadow areas of the open space, and these are identified by the blue contour lines that you can see on the light green meadow areas on the landscaping plan. To see that a bit in better detail, what I'll do now is show a close up view of these areas to clarify where these levels are proposed. So this is the close up view, and this is specifically looking at the southern area of the country park, which has the largest area of land affected by the proposals. As you can see, the blue contour line showed the soil buns with spot heights of a maximum of 2.5 metres in height beyond the existing land level, and that includes a raised amphitheatre, so it's, it's a bunding and then an open space area beyond, which is uh, a, a, an amphitheatre area. So this plan reaffirms the extent of the soil bonds are only located within the areas of the open space, which would not have any impact on the recreational use of the land or be affected by any other matters such as flooding. So that concludes the stills convener for this item. Thank you very much indeed for that, Mr Scott. And um, now opening up to uh, any questions for officers. So if you could use the chat function, that would be great. Do we have any questions? I'll give it a moment just for any satellite delays. <laughs> Councillor Barnicoff, thank you. Uh, thanks, uh, convener. Um, I would like to ask uh, Jamie a couple of questions. Um, first of all, um, when this development was um, proposed in um, LDP1, I was against it on the grounds of loss of open space between Kinross and Milner Thought and propensity to flooding. Uh, however, we are where we are with the development and potential further development uh, should the reporter um, indicate approval of second phase. Um, 2.5 metres of bonding is quite high. Um, I notice that there's comment made in paragraph 48. There is no right to a view in planning grounds and therefore the associated land raising um, does not constitute an adverse impact. Um, I'm assuming that um, this land raising will be in front of houses, new houses, not existing houses. Um, but I note the location of the site and the proximity to the motorway. Okay. Sorry, Councillor Barnacle, could you, could you come forward with your question, please? I, I get yeah. you're going through what you're concerned about, but if you could ask the question, that would be, that would be great. Thank you. Yeah, well, well, first of all, is this bonding as high as it is to uh, alleviate possible flooding of the open space area? Is that one reason? Um, there's talk about the environmental impact of less lorry movements. They would be temporary, I assume, at the start of development. And why can't the higher bonding be put along the motorway side rather than in front of the houses. OK, one is not entitled to a view, but surely the uh, near pr provision of open space is something people would want to see rather than not see. 
thank you. Oh, okay, Th thank you, uh, Councillor Barnacle. Um, I'm not sure. I know you were sort of bang on time, and I'm not um, sure if um, if you caught the the, the beginning that um, the uh, the reporter has actually come back. This was done earlier on in the week, and um, yes, we we have that that has been agreed. So we are starting from that position. But Mr. Scott, if you could come back with some answers to those questions, please. Certainly. Thanks, Gavina. Yes, Councillor Barnacle. So to answer your question, I'll go through it. In Essentially, there is already existing bonding proposed within the open space area within the country park, and that's partly done to, to mitigate in terms of landscape uh, impacts from the motorway, so to contain the park area. This bonding isn't seeking to essentially replace that in any way. And it, similarly, it's not also been put in place to address any flooding or any other concerns. As noted in the report, the, the soil is available for use in the locality, so it's been formed purely on a landscape proposal. So the bonding at 2.5 metres high uh, is the maximum, but obviously it, over the piece, it's not, not peaking at that amount. There is a series of undulations. Uh, so certainly within the southern area, which I showed on the last still there, you'll see there's an amphitheatre, which is actually a 50 metre wide kind of platform, but it would benefit from sheltering from a slightly higher bond behind it, woodland trees and planting, etc., which would mean any public events or activity that was taking place in the amphitheatre, which would be a, a very usable space, uh, according to our green space colleagues, but that would be sheltered in effect from the residential properties which are located to the east of that. So there are houses which would view in front onto the open space, but a 2.5 metre high bund at the distance that they are away from those housing wouldn't be considered to have any adverse environmental or amenity impact at all. Uh, and essentially this actually provides some features and interest within the open space that are, as I say, our community green space colleagues are happy with. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Simpson, your question, please. Thank you, Convener. Um, Mr. Scott, in the course of his answer to Councillor Barnacle, has answered my question. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Councillor Waters, your question, please. Thank you. Thank you, Convener. Just uh, still on the, the flooding issue, um, one of the major concerns that has been raised, and certainly um, is over the, the, the soil that's been removed from, from the site and the problems that, we, that will uh, potentially create. Uh, this is, a, you know, in the area, this is historically well known as a site with an uh, area with a high water table. And there's a real concern that this may add to some of the flooding and some of the uh, issues that we've seen uh, uh, throughout uh, the old Lathro site and in the, in the new one. Can we get how many assurances that, that the the, the removal of this soil uh, will, will not cause um, any any or exasperate any any um, uh, issues with uh, flooding. Yes, thank you for your question. Um, uh, I think Mr. Scott would like to come in first, and then we'll go to um, Mr. Stewart, who's here from flooding, to be able to answer that question. So we'll start off with Mr. Scott, and then over to Mr. Stewart. Thank you. Yes, Kavir, thanks for your question, Councillor Waters. So in essence, the phase two development that's just been approved by the reporter, the levels for the development are set within that planning application. So the levels are not a change from the, the approved levels and the ones that have been considered in detail as part of that planning application. What's changing is that the soil that was being taken away to form that development is now no longer being taken away. So it's going to be used on the, the landscape area. So it's not changing the levels that are agreed and approved as being acceptable within the phase two development. Uh, and the soil that's going on to the, the open space area is out with all of the flood risk areas. So it wouldn't have any adverse impact on either the existing land for phase two or the proposed open space. But as, as the conveners alluded to, Mr. Stewart's here to provide further technical details if, if you wish. Um, and how do we know saying nothing further to add? Um, can uh, I, uh, can I, no, sorry, Walters, are you? Sorry, sorry, convener. Can I come back on that? I just, you know, mm -hmm. if, we, if we, we have a, the phase two and we're actually lowering it, I think that that is relevant and material to this this decision. And we are lowering the level, and and we have the floodplains that have been identified by SEPA. Uh, and our flooding, our flooding team. And my concern just basically is that we, we, you know, you know, because we've got flooding in the area, we are lowering that. We are bringing that level to 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 closer to the the water table and the flooding, the floodplain. And and I, I think I think it's relevant to this application that we, you know, 
get a little bit more information if it's available on the um, sure. assurances, especially given the history of the, the Lathro site with flooding and drainage. Totally, and, and it is relevant, um, and, and uh, that, that was happy to have these answers coming forward. Um, we've got um, three officers coming forward with, with additional information, so hopefully that will, will provide the, the information you're looking for, Councillor Waters. So we'll start with um, Mr Scott, um, and then um, we'll go to Mr Smith, and uh, sorry, then we'll go to um, Mr Stewart, and then Mr Smith. Thank you. Thanks for the question. So just to reiterate what I said earlier, within phase two, the proposed levels are not changing as part of this planning application. So the extant permission just granted by the Director of Planning and Environmental Appeals does set what the acceptable levels are. We're not considering as part of this application any changes to those levels, and it would be strained beyond what the extent of this planning application is actually seeking. So the soil is coming away at that level, so it wouldn't be open for us to reconsider the levels in phase two because that's not part of the development that's in front of us today. All we're considering is essentially what's happening with that soil and where it goes. The proposal here is to amend a condition, which is solely the focus of this application, to put that within the open space. Now, flood risk impacts are certainly material for the assessment of where that soil goes on the open space and the report assess addresses that, that there are no issues. The flood risk assessment is a detailed assessment which has been verified by our flooding colleagues and locating soil in areas that are not subject to flood risk accounting for the development that's approved in phase one and two results in a situation that's acceptable with no adverse impact on flooding. Thank you. Um, Mr Stewart, if you could come in with some uh, extra information please, thank you. Yes, yeah, so I think I, I think what I'm trying to understand what you're trying to say is that okay, you might be doing excavations for uh, the foundations of the houses or things like that, and you're talking about lowering the levels there. But essentially, that's just for the foundations of the building. So all that material is then getting used on the higher ground out with the floodplain, as uh, Mr. Scott's just said. So, in terms of increasing flood risk. Uh, there is no increase in flood risk because the soil is used on the higher ground out with the floodplain within that development site. Hopefully that helps clear it up a bit. Thank you. And Mr Smith, do you have anything to add? Not really, no, but again, it was just uh, clarifying that the what is approved and was proposed in relation to phase two is not changing. Full assessment of the flood risk issues associated to that was contained within that report and has been further assessed by the reporter. What we're talking about here is instead of taking soil and transporting it many miles away, what we're doing is taking that soil and depositing it within the country park area and areas that are not at risk of flood because they sit at a higher level. They will then sit at a higher level still. We've assessed the flood risk implications associated to that uh, and those uh, are not something that are, are of any concern. Uh, but I'll leave uh, the councillor to uh, advise whether or not he, he is um, happy with those responses. Councillor Waters, does that answer your question? Not, 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 not really. But, but uh, I understand where officers are coming from, and that we, we are dealing with the application that's in front in front of us. But there, there are a lot of residents in the area that are concerned that uh, because of uh, the history of the area, uh, that this could be another another um, a potential for for flooding in the area. And it would have been nice to have a wee bit more reassurance over that. Uh, but I accept the the answers that have been given. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you, Councillor Waters. Uh, um, I'm not sure how our officers could give any more reassurance. We've had three officers actually give, give that assurance, and the reporter has given the assurance. But um, I'm not sure what else we could give you. But I, I understand the, the the concerns that you're bringing forward, Councillor Barnacle. You have a subsequent question. Yes, thanks, Convener. Um, I note that in the representations, it says. Proposed landscape amphitheatre inappropriate at this location. And just coming back to my earlier question, is it normal in a development to, there's been a lot of soil movement in the course of this development, a considerable amount of bonding, much more than I would normally see in any development I've seen. And is it normal uh, to agree to relocate that soil in these 2.5 metre high bondings 
rather than move it off site, which is a temporary situation. Is that normal? And, and, and I'm still not sure why it has to be 2.5 metres high and it can't be closer to the motorway. I, I don't feel that that was properly answered in the first response. <clears throat> OK, well, we'll certainly see what we can do. Um, I mean, this is the application that's in front of us and that's what's been assessed. But I'll ask Mr Scott to come back in on your question. Yes, thanks, Councillor Barnacle, for your follow up question. In respect of levels on a development site, whether it's for res residential or anything else, it's quite typical that we'll get a proposal which will show the existing land levels and then proposed land levels within the completed development, so the post land levels, there is always uh, a moving about of soils or a balancing of soils where land levels change, where things might raise in certain areas or lower in other areas. And it's those changes which we have regard to when we're assessing things like flood risk levels. Uh, and that's all set to ensure things like infrastructure, etc. work uh, and also that houses set an appropriate level. So that soil is quite often dealt with on the site itself. It would be moved around and that's the, the ideal from an environmental perspective that any soil on the site either stays where it is or if things have to move, it's graded within the land to either increase or, or lower it elsewhere. So what's being proposed here is originally that the balance of that soil was to be removed uh, and the open space, as I've explained, was being retained at the level as it currently is. Taking that soil off the site is obviously a significant environmental effect. Obviously, it would be a temporary measure, well, as you say, whilst the soils are being created, but it would be permanent in so far as that, that top soil and that material is being moved elsewhere. So it's actually quite desirable to try and retain the soil within the wider lateral site, which is what this development is proposing to do. So it saves the vehicle movements of trucking off the material and keeps it on site. So obviously it's internal movements only rather than on the road network. In terms of the levels that are proposed, the levels that are proposed have been designed by an engineer having regard to the available soil in terms of um, cubic tons available. So they're using the balance, the net balance of the soil that's available on the open space and a calculation has been undertaken to how that can be placed and sited on the open space to use all of that soil in effect. But in doing so, it's been done in a way that's not going to be overly engineered. It's not just a block of soil. They're adding tapers and levels are increasing slightly. So the amphitheater, um, which I referred to earlier, is obviously creating a slightly higher platform area, if you like, but then it's got a bunding behind it, which would provide a degree of shelter and, and landscape interest. That's what's being proposed as part of this application because that's the soil that is available from the, the deficit of having established the site. Thank you. OK, thank you. Um, I've got no further questions coming forward, so um, um, I'm going to move the paper. Um, I normally ask for a motion, but I, I was just going to, to jump in and, and do that. Um, we have a site here that has planning permission um, that has been um, recently agreed by the reporter um, that everything meets the requirements as it should. What we're really talking about now is moving soil predominantly. And as a council, we have said many, many times that we want to be more ecologically friendly. We want to do our bit for the environment. And this is a classic example of us having now to walk the walk rather than talk the talk. We have a developer who is not wanting to move soil off site, is wanting to utilise that and is wanting to make that um, part of the development. That is actually exactly what we want developers to start looking at doing. So I am I'm pleased actually to put this forward. I know these development sites are contentious within the local area. But now we have this situation, I think it's really important that we start doing things properly with the environment in mind. And this is exactly what this does. So I'm happy to move this um, the, the, this application. And I see that Councillor Illingworth is uh, willing to second. Councillor Illingworth. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm sorry, Councillor Ingworth, I'm not hearing you. Do you have yeah, any comments yeah. on seconding? Um, can, can you hear me now? Yes, I can. Okay, okay. Yep, I'm happy to second this. Uh, I've listened to the responses from both um, the local councillors and to the offices, and I'm, I'm happy. 
uh, that all the processes are being followed correctly. So. Thank you. Do we have an amendment? There is no amendment coming forward on the chat, so the application is approved. Thank you very much indeed. Okay, so that moves us on to the um, second application in front of us. Now, the um, did anybody spot my deliberate mistake earlier? Um, I was asking for deputations and I said, are we happy to hear deputations on 512? And I should have said 522. Um, so my apologies to everybody. We do not have a deputation for this particular application. Um, that was me just keeping you all on your toes um, rather than me making a mistake. So my apologies, everyone. But actually, we have a deputation for 522, not 512. Um, anyway, 512 is what we're looking at now. So that's the proposed environment business park uh, classes four, five and six and associated works um, LDP site E3 in principle on land 200 metres north of Thompson Landscapes Inchgate Place in Perth. And could I ask Mr Smith to speak to the report? Thank you. Thank you, convener. Uh, and this is another application that's been managed by Callum Petrie. And I'd also like to thank him for all his efforts over many, many years. So turning to the application, as a brief description of the proposals, planning permission and principle is sought for business, general industrial and storage and distribution uses, specifically as an expansion of the Perth Food and Drink Park. The site is specifically identified in LDP2 for employment uses. Now, access is from the south via Butte Drive, Arran Road, to the A912, which is Dunkeld Road, which in turn gives access to the A9 Trunk Road. And given the application was classified as a major development, pre-application consultation was undertaken with the local community and other required parties, and a report on this has been submitted. The report before you sets out an assessment of both the principle of the development and other matters of detail, including issues related to design and layout, visual impacts, residential amenity, access, drainage and flooding, potential for contamination, sustainable construction, waste collection, conservation issues, biodiversity and heritage, and possible requirements for road improvement contributions. All this leading to a recommendation that the application be approved subject to the conditions detailed. I'll now take you through a series of images, setting out the context and a visual overview of the proposals. So turning to the first image, here we see an aerial photograph which highlights in red the location and extent of the site. As you will see to the north and northeast are firstly the River Almond, which then in turn flows into the River Tay. Between the site and these watercourses are flood defences, landscaping and active travel paths. To the west is the rail line between Perth and Inverness, whilst to the south and east are wider areas in or proposed for employment and business uses, which form other parts of the Perth Food and Drink Park or wider North Muirton Industrial Estate. The next slide here is a, a larger scale image, which again shows the site and its surrounding, but also in blue with the dotted outline, the areas in PKC ownership. Uh, and given that this is just some, a simple planning permission and principle application, there is limited other detail. So that concludes the presentation and I'll pass back to you, convener. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Smith. OK, I'll open it up to questions um, to officers. Could uh, councillors please put uh, a queue in the chat box if they have any questions on this application? I'll just give that a minute for any particular satellite delays. Okay, I see no questions coming forward. So um, we'll go straight to uh, a motion. Um, I'm happy to do it, but does anybody else want to come forward to move the paper? Councillor James, thank you. Just to say, you're doing everything this morning, uh, convener, really. Um, natural progression, it, it, it makes perfect sense. This uh, this park's already a success anyway, uh, and, and it's quite nice to see the, this this land being developed. I have no hesitation with uh, uh, proposing that, that we uh, go, go forward with this. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor James. And Councillor Illingworth, you're happy to second? Yep, I'm happy to second this. Um, quite often you get the comment 
about building houses and, and the other question as well, where are all these people going to work? And, and here is part of the answer. So I'm, I'm happy to promote business within the Perth and Kinross area. Thank you, Councillor Ingworth. Um, do we have any amendments? Thank you, Councillor. There's no amendments to that, so the application is approved. Thank you very much indeed. Okay, so that brings us on to um, the first local application in front of us. So this is a residential development in principle, land west of Berino Hatch Bank in Kinross. And I'd like to ask Mrs. Coleman to speak to the report. Thank you. Thank you, convener. I'll now take members through a presentation of slides which show both plans and various photographic images to set the scene for this proposal. The application is for a residential development in principle and the draft layout plan submitted by the applicant shows one dwelling house. This aerial shot shows the site for the proposed residential development in principle. It is clear it's in a rural location, but you can see the M90 motorway to the east and the parallel Gurney Bank Road, both leading to Kinross, located to the north. The heavily treed area to the west of the site is clearly seen in this image, with an existing access to the east of the site. The site location plan shows the application in red, with the ownership of the applicant in blue. There are a number of properties in this area, creating a substantial grouping in the countryside. To the west of the site is the heavily treed area you saw in the previous aerial shot. To the north, there is an existing dwelling house in the ownership of the applicant. To the east is an existing vehicular access leading to residential properties not in the applicant's ownership. And finally, to the south, the minor public road known as Hatchbank Road with a number of residential properties beyond. The proposed site layout plan accompanies the in-principle application and has been submitted by the applicant to show how one unit could be accommodated on the site while still protecting neighbouring residential amenity, protecting the landscape and accommodating the drainage for a single dwelling house. We will now move to a series of photos which seek to show the context of surroundings. This first photo is taken from Hatchbank Road, and <clears throat> the public road through the settlement and is looking in a westerly direction. The access to the site is just before the for sale sign you can see to the right of the road. The heavily treed southern boundary to the public road is also very clear in this shot. This photo is taken from that access you saw in the previous slide with the for sale sign a good indicator of the position. From this shot, the site is to the left of the screen on the other side of the timber gate. Access to the site, however, is not taken from this point, but rather from further north to the middle of the screen, just where the existing fence starts to curve to the east, which is to the right. A previous access remains at this point, and it is proposed to utilise this access for the new dwelling house. This final shot is taken from the southeast corner of the site, looking northwest across the site. You can see that, with the exception of a large tree in the centre of the site, the site is very much open with hard surfacing. The access to the site will come at the northeast corner of the site into the south of the existing house that you can see. Boundaries are therefore effectively what you can see in this photo. The neighbouring boundary to the north beyond the vehicular access, an existing fence to the east, and finally a fence then woodland to both south and west. That concludes the slides, and we're now back to the location plan. Thank you, convener. Uh, thank you, Mrs. Collender, for that. Um, and I'm now opening it up for questions. Um, Councillor Barnacle, thank you very much for coming in swiftly there. Um, I normally feel like I'm just pausing, waiting for people to do that. So thank you for coming in and your question, please. Thank you. Yes, uh, thank you, convener. Um, I note that this has moved from two houses to one house and that it does fit with the houses in the countryside policy. The, the thing that I'm concerned about is it's an in principle application and there's several conditions or reference to conditions, both in relation to the height of the house, 
the loss of woodland and the replacement thereof and also in connection with drainage and flooding. Uh, I have experience of in principle conditions not getting carried forward to full applications and I'm seeking some reassurance that the conditions that we're referring to here will have some uh, certainty of being carried forward to a full application because that's really important particularly in relation to the woodland so um, that's what I'm seeking here. Um, Mrs Cogliffe uh, um, can you give that reassurance? Uh, thank you convener and thank you Councillor Barnacle. Um, yes your, your first point was with regard to Previously, um, an application in principle was refused that showed a layout of two houses. Uh, we have to remember that it is in principle and any layout is just indicative. But the previous one that was refused did have an indicative layout of two houses and this one has an indicative layout of one. Um, as I said in the slide presentation, we are happy that with that indicated position of one house that all the things that we would be looking for in terms of the landscaping, the residential amenity, the drainage of the site can all be achieved. And moving on to your second point, which was more about conditions that yes, we have included. We have included a number of conditions proposed um, in the recommendation for approval, which included things, as you said, um, for example, the height of the proposed height of the building, the management of the woodland which is all to the west of the site but is within the um, applicant's ownership. We would certainly be wishing all of those to be carried forward when we receive a matter specified application and we would be looking for those as part of it to be in compliance with the in principle application. Just a slight word of caution is that we would expect a matter specified application to come in and therefore if it's not in compliance with the outline application then it would potentially be refused. An applicant could come in with a full detailed application and we would have to assess it that way, but the material application of the permission, if it was granted in outline, would therefore carry through, but it would be easier um, for somebody coming in, for example, with a two story house and we would have to then assess it on its own merits. So whilst I can give assurance that we will certainly be looking to carry through most of the comments that we've made in recommending this for approval, I just have to put a slight word of caution. Should an application come in in detail, we would have to assess it on its own merits at that time. Yes, thanks, Anna. I understand that. Thank you. Sorry, I'm having difficulty unmuting there. Uh, Councillor Simpson, you're next, and then Councillor Waters. Thank you. Thank you, Convener. I just want to, to ask uh, about the any effect there might be on the ancient woodland referred to, especially from paragraphs 46 onwards. It is not clear to me if there's to be any development on the ancient woodland, uh, perhaps access or drainage. So if I have some clarification as to whether the ancient woodland is to be left completely alone or whether there's to be some development on it at present. Mrs. Collins, could you come back on that, please? Sure. Uh, thank you, Councillor Simpson. Yes, the ancient woodland is to the west of the site. Um, there is no proposal to develop within it. It's not within the red line site, as you can see on the um, still that's on the screen at the moment. However, as part of the proposal, the applicant, because it's within their ownership, is offering up a management plan uh, for that site and for the ancient woodland, which is why there is a condition um, proposed within it um, on the application. Just quickly looking it up to see which one. Yes, it's condition five is a woodland management plan. So we are asking for that to come in as part of any subsequent application. And that is more about managing it, getting rid of anything that is in a poor condition, but also new planting. And they are talking and the information they've already put into us is around about another 120 trees going into that area. So it would be a win from our point of view in terms of planning, in terms of the um, management of that ancient woodland, which is not managed particularly well at the moment, but there is no um, application whatsoever for any uh, physical development within that site. Uh, thank you. Uh, Councillor Waters, your question, please. 
Thank you, convener. Uh, Councillor Simpson really covered most of my question, but, but but I'm still a little bit confused over the 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 ancient woodland to the west is not is not within the red line area uh, of this application. But is is a is a condition that would that would uh, tie in the management of this ancient woodland? Is that enforceable? Um, Mrs. Calder, can you can you answer that for me, please? Yes, it's not within the red line site, but because it's within the ownership of the applicant and they have already offered up information on this and details of it, then it is reasonable for us to have asked for that as part of um, any subsequent application. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Councillor James, your question, please. Yes, yeah, thanks, convener. Um, I tried looking online at a couple of the other um, uh, uh, planning application or, or permissions already given, uh, but had difficulty accessing the site. My question is regarding the uh, Greyhound rescue, and I'm assuming it's a stables um, on the the left of the site in ownership. It looks like there's um, on the map you've currently got up on the screen. It looks like there's an access road which is from that site. Would this affect access to that rescue? Mrs. Cardinal? Yeah, yes, there is an existing access, but it, what you saw in one of the slides, um, it showed that it's actually blocked off at the moment. So the access to the rescue centre goes further north. So if you follow in from the red line site that you can see on the screen at the moment, and then go to the right and then loops round and back and past Hatchbank Lodge. That is the access into the um, rescue site at the moment. And at the moment, as I showed on one of the slides, it showed the fence line. It's blocked off at the moment, so you can't go through the application site. I don't know if that quite answers it. It's a bit difficult to explain it on the, on the screen, but um, it doesn't affect it. It is still a going concern and my colleagues in environmental health looked at it over potential noise from it, but were satisfied with the noise impact assessment that was submitted. Yeah, it's OK. It, it makes sense now. I didn't see that going around the outside. Uh, I do worry about the noise, though, to be to be honest, because it, it's a bit like, you know, uh, how many times have we heard of somebody buying um, a house next to an airport? I've said this before and then complaining about aircraft noise. I just worry that the, the extra property here might uh, create extra noise from the dogs. You know, it, it's something else for the dogs to bark at, but that's that's by the by. OK, thank you. Thank you. Do we have any further questions? No, there is nothing coming forward. So uh, again, I will I will ask, but again, I'm, um, um, uh, Councillor Wilson, um, are you coming into second or coming into um, to move the paper? <laughs> hey, with your permission, convener, I'm happy to move the paper. I've listened Please. carefully to the. Sorry, um, can you hear me? Okay. Uh, yes, sir, sorry. Uh, please do. Please uh, uh, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, with your permission, I'd like to move the paper. Um, uh, I've listened carefully to the debate or the discussion and the questions, which I thought were all very relevant. Um, and I understand um, Councillor Barnacles um, wishing an assurance that the conditions will be carried forward. And we've had that reassurance from Mrs. Concliffe. So I'm, I'm content. Um, this is a a reasonable size site. We've had an assurance about the ancient woodland uh, and how that's going to be dealt with. And therefore, I think that it's appropriate for a, a single house development in principle, and we should approve the application. Thank you. Councillor Illingworth, you're happy to second. Yeah, I'm happy to second. Um, I'm comfortable that the officers have dealt with this uh, appropriately, and this is an appropriate um, uh, planning permission to pass. Thank you very much. Um, do we have any amendments? No, there's no amendments coming forward, so um, we uh, can approve that application. And in principle, thank you very much indeed. And that brings us on to the final paper. And uh, this is the um, application with the deputation. So um, I will 
uh, introduce it, um, change of use and al alterations from agricultural buildings to form eight holiday accommodation units, erection of three holiday accommodation units, utility building, formation of access road, car parking, drainage and associated works in West Gormick Farm, Kinloch and Blair Gallery. And again, Mrs Cudliffe, over to you to speak to the report. Thank you. Thank you, convener. Um, as an update, I'd like to draw members' attention to paragraph 45 on pages 72 and 73 of your papers. In the final sentence, which is on page 73, it states that both bothies are in a poor state of repair and uninhabited. Whilst this is a case for Unit 11, Cattleman's Cottage, Unit 10 has indeed been renovated in recent years and is now inhabited. The proposal, however, remains the same and it is just the current condition of this unit which is stated incorrectly in the report and apologies for this. So now I will take members through a presentation of slides which show the plans and various photographic images. The application, as has been stated, is for a change of use and alterations from existing traditional agricultural and bothy buildings to form eight holiday units within the um, steading and the erection of three new holiday units and the, the site, of, sorry, new holiday units on the site of the existing large agricultural buildings. And as part of the proposal, a utility building is proposed along with the formation of access roads, car parking, drainage and associated works. This aerial shot shows the application site to the north of the settlement of Kinloch. The inset on the right top right of the screen is simply at a larger scale so that you can see the details of the site more clearly. As you can see from this slide, the location of West Gormick Farm buildings is some distance away from Kinloch and is approximately 2.3 kilometres from the A923 main road from Blair Gowrie to Dunkeld. The site plan shows the location of the site on the lower plan in relation to Kinloch to the south and Blair Gowrie to the southeast. West Gormack is a farm with a number of buildings, both traditional agricultural buildings and former residential properties, as well as more modern sheds and buildings. The upper plan on the screen gives a more detailed location of the site, where you can see the large steading building at the north of the Red Line site with detached buildings around, then the small cottage to the south, approximately 30 metres away, and finally the bothy building known as Cattleman's Cottage to the southeast of the site, approximately 440 metres away. This site plan offers a better indication of what is proposed. The purple area is a traditional steading where it is proposed to convert this building into six holiday units, units one to six. To achieve the courtyard area within the steading, more modern agricultural sheds will be removed. The three green units, unit 79, are all new build but on the site of the existing large agricultural sheds. The brown area to the south is a renovation and extension of an existing small cottage, Unit 10, and to the southeast, some 440 metres away, the proposal once again in brown, Unit 11, is a renovation and extension of Cattleman's Cottage. <clears throat> These site visuals, this slide offers some site visuals produced by the architect for Units 1 to 10. This shows the converted steading at the top of the screen to house the six new holiday units with the three new builds in two separate units immediately to the east and south of the steading. Then unit 10 being the renovation and extension to the Bothy located approximately 30 metres south of that main group. Not shown in this plan is unit 11 as it is located, as I've already said, approximately 440 metres southeast of the grouping. This slide offers some of the steading elevations showing the proposed details, including finishing materials, which will see the existing slate roof refurbished with new Spanish slate, the retention of the stone walls and aluminium clad windows and doors of a style to match the original. Although not listed or in a conservation area, the proposed detail has been carefully considered to protect and enhance the existing historical building. We will now move to a series of photos which seek to show the context of the surroundings. This first, <clears throat> this first photo is looking into the access to the A923 from within the settlement of Kinloch. 
the A923 is where you can see the blue car going from left to right. At this point, it is clear that the width of the road is two way, but this changes to one way, eh, sorry, one lane shortly after mis passing the main settlement as you progress northwards to the site. This photo is taken much further up the road at the junction of Linduff Cottage and over Balcairn Lodge, with Gormack House visible in the distance. The narrowness of the road is clear in this image. The road to the site continues up past the entrance to Gormack House, then back down the hill to the proposed development site. This photo is taken from the access road once you're over the hill from Gormack House. The cottage immediately in the foreground is not part of the proposals, but the white gable end cottage you see beyond is unit 10 for redevelopment and extension. Then beyond that, you can see the roofs of the extending and agricultural sheds of West Gormack Farm, where most of the development is proposed. We're now down at the main part of the site, looking eastwards, when in this shot, you will see the first part of the stone steading building with the large agricultural shed in the middle to be removed to allow for the courtyard. On the right of the screen, you can see the large agricultural sheds where the new build is proposed. This photo is taken from the northeast of the site, showing the rear and side of the steading. It is clear that the steading is in a reasonable condition and is certainly worthy of retention. This final shot is taken from the road and the large build building houses the site for two of the three new build units, with the third new build being in the position of the shed to the left of the screen. That concludes the stills and we are now back to the site layout plan. Thank you, convener. Thank you, Mr. Lovelove. OK, so we'll open it up to the next part, which is to um, ask for the deputations. Um, can I ask? OK, so we have um, Mr. Andrew Barrett, I believe, is the is the first deputation. Mr. Barrett, are you available? Are you are you with us? Hello, Mr. Barrett. Can you hear me, sir? Yeah, I, I can hear you. Can you hear me? I can. Yes, thank you very much indeed. Um, thank you for joining us today. What happens at this point is I will pass you over now to uh, my vice convener, uh, Councillor Bob Braun. He will um, go through the, the timing process and, um, and then when that's done, you'll come back to me if that's OK. And, and hopefully you're available to answer any questions um, after your deputation. Is that OK? Yes, indeed. That's fine. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Braun, thank you. Thank you, convener. Mr Barrett, can you hear me OK? Yes, I can hear you fine. Fine. OK, now you have 10 minutes, up to 10 minutes to give your deputation. Um, I will warn you if we get to the nine minute mark that you only have one minute left to go. But I so say you have 10 minutes and all. Um, and when I if you're happy with that, when I hear you next speak, I will start the clock. Very good. Thank you very much. Thank you. OK, well, uh, good morning. Thanks for uh, allowing me to, uh, to speak to the committee this morning. Uh, I've been asked to speak uh, on behalf of the 34 local residents who signed the petition objecting to this development. And the main objections by the residents relate to the unsuitability of the long single track road from Kinloch up to the site. Uh, you've just seen some photographs of it, which interestingly were taken both at the wide end of the road at Kinloch and also the straight flat section at the top of the hill, uh, ignoring the uh, section which I seek to demonstrate is particularly unsuitable up the hill from Kinloch uh, to, the, uh, to the site itself. Uh, there have been previous assessments by the roads department which stated that this road is not suited to an increase in traffic loading. And two previous applications for a single dwelling and an access road to East Gormack Farm failed because of this. So it is incredible that an application which allows an extra 20 vehicles, as proposed by the parking spaces at this development, driven by holidaymakers holiday uh, unfamiliar with the road, is now deemed not to cause an unacceptable increase in traffic intensity. Uh, your report 21-190 places great emphasis on the provision of three new passing spaces by the applicant. These proposed passing spaces 
will offer no relief whatsoever to the problems of the road as they are located on the flat, straight, open section which you've just seen in the photograph which has excellent visibility and is in the last 500 metres to the development site. This section of the road has never been an issue for safety or ease of passing. The dangerous section of the road is the lower two kilometres up from Kinloch, which is steep and winding between high overgrown banks and has seven blind bends and deep ditches along its length. Nothing is suggested to address this, and it is the part of the road where many collisions and countless near misses have occurred over the years. Vehicles are forced to use muddy entrances to fields and residence gateways in order to pass. The black skid marks along the road at the blind bend serve to further underline this danger. Now, I have emailed all the committee members a map showing the locations of the dangerous parts, which were not shown in the photograph, and the pointless new passing places in the clear section at the top. We can't understand how this dangerous part has been ignored in the report and believe the committee members would quickly agree it is unsuitable if they were to drive up the road themselves to see it as it is. The new passing places appear to be a disingenuous attempt to divert your attention from the real problem. There are also some factual inconsistencies in the report, one of which you have mentioned that the uh, Bothy Unit 10 has been renovated and occupied by farm labourers since before the uh, planning application was submitted. And it states that the buildings are redundant and surplus to the requirements of the farm business and that the farm is currently redundant. Both of these statements are false as the buildings are still in constant use. New buildings which will provide the same facilities as those alleged surplus and redundant ones are being constructed. I understand that the new buildings have been constructed for the sole purpose of rendering the old ones redundant to justify the development. The old buildings proposed for development are used to shelter livestock and store feed, bedding, etc., which are delivered by heavy goods vehicles which unload there because they are unable to cross the old stone bridge of Dramad just north of the site to get to Middleton over the Launty Burn. These vehicles up to 40 tonnes will now try to cross the bridge to the new building and, as has happened only this week, get stuck and impact the bridge structure. This is already happening just during the construction of the new building. There is no weight limit shown on the bridge, but I assume it has been surveyed as suitable for the 40 tonne articulated lorries which will now try to cross it. I understand that, should the planning be granted, another building and a heavy goods vehicle and loading area will be constructed opposite the so-called redundant building which is under development to do the same job that it is now doing. The report uh, describes the uh, buildings as all being derelict and uninhabited, but I've already uh, agreed that the uh, Unit 10 is not so. And finally, is there a reason why the large section of the full BAT survey have been redacted in the report on the uh, PKC site? This report was commissioned by the applicant's architects, so does it say something that they don't want heard at planning time? We feel that the planning process has been manipulated by the applicant and his agents and the report shows that little, if any, inspection of the access roads and current use of the site has been carried out by PKC. How many of the committee have driven the roads themselves and seen the realities of the situation? The local people rely on the duty of care by the committee to make a proper, responsible judgment based on the facts and not just on this clearly flawed report. Uh, that is the end of which, what I wish to say. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr Barrett. Thank you for your deputation. I'll hand you back now to the convener. Over to you, convener. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Councillor Braun, and uh, thank you for the deputation, Mr Barrett. If you're uh, in agreement, we'll have some questions from uh, councillors. There's a few coming up on, uh, on my computer screen. Are you happy with that? Yes, of course. Please go ahead. Thank you. First of all, Councillor Wilson, your questions, please. Thanks, convener, and thanks, Mr. Barrett, for your presentation. Um, I, I understand the issues you've made about the, the road and, and actually not going to ask questions about the road. It's about the current state of the farm buildings and the issues you made about the new construction. Um, it, we, we've already established that the Bothy site number 10 is in, is that in use by 
labourers from the farm at the moment. Yes, it is. I, 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 actually, that's not true. I believe it is now being advertised on the internet as holiday accommodation uh, via the Airbnb system. But uh, up until, I think, September, when that advert went out, it was occupied by farm labourers. OK, and, and in your opinion, is the building habitable? And Yes, it looks quite nice occupation? on the website. Yes. The other cottage, is it? it and I've forgotten all the reference numbers, convener, but... The, the uh, number the 11, the one 400 metres yeah, away. number 11, is that... No, th it, that, that is thoroughly derelict. That has been so for a long time and nothing has been right, done to that okay. because there is no access to it without churning up the Cataran Trail, which is the uh, means of access to it. Right, OK, thank you. And the farm buildings, although they're traditional, they're still in use? Yes, they are. OK, and you're... But they're, they're not redundant at the moment. Absolutely not. No, they, they, they are still in use. They have always been in use and they are located in the sheltered area at the bottom of the hill uh, to protect the livestock from the, the weather where the new one is being built. Right, OK. And the, the issue, uh, my final point, convener, uh, final part of this question is the, the issue about the bridge across the, 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 the Loch Day Burn, right? Um, I hope that pronunciation of the burn was correct, but um, the the bridge across the burn, uh, are, are you saying that the use of the new building, the new build, farm building, will involve up to 40 tonne lorries having to cross that bridge and it's, it's is it simply not suitable in your opinion or? Uh, uh, I can't it, say it, it, it's it, it certainly is not suitable in terms of turning circle. There's very sharp bends in and out of the access to the bridge. Yes. And it is a 200 plus year old uh, flint constructed bridge. I don't know if it has been surveyed as suitable for such heavy vehicles okay. because those vehicles have always unloaded at the, um, at the steading which is under development at the moment. Right. Okay. Th thank you very much. I'll leave the other questions to other members, convener. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Wilson. Um, next, uh, Councillor, Councillor Simpson, your questions, thank you, please. Good, thank you, Convener, and thank you, Mr Barrett, for your deputation. I wonder if I could ask about the roads. Uh, we've seen there, or most of us will have seen the rather alarming video of when you drive up the road. I, I've recently taken delivery of a new car, so I won't be taking you up in your offer of driving up there myself. But I wonder if you could give us um, uh, some indication of what you would do driving up that road when you meet a vehicle coming the other way in one of the more accessible parts of the road. What is your What are your options when you meet someone coming the other way? Uh, if you meet someone coming the other way on the um, the, the steep bendy section at the bottom, uh, there is uh, amongst locals who know the road, you will know where the nearest. Um, field entrance or residence driveway is that you can back into. Uh, obviously people who don't know the road will just be stuck in the position and perhaps try to reverse back and drop into one of the deep ditches or down the, uh, the 30 foot drop into the burn at the bottom of the hill which didn't seem to get a mention either. Uh, yeah, there's no that's... protection on that at all. That, that's why I wouldn't be doing it. But um, perhaps then you could give us an indication of, of what, what, what then happens, because um, it's a fairly remote part of the world. Uh, you can actually get stuck there, can you? Yeah, yes, it's quite common for delivery vehicles to uh, um, drop two wheels into the ditch and require a tractor to come and pull them out, which we do quite regularly. But I, I have no further questions. Thank you very much indeed, Mr. Barrett. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Simpson. Councillor Illingworth, your question, please. Yeah. Uh, Mr Barrett, you asked, or you said that there have been a number of, of accidents. Um, ha have any of the accidents been significant, involving injury or destruction of cars or, or anything like that? And, and when, in your knowledge, was the last accident? Uh, I think the, the last minor collision was in the, the last two or three months and uh, they're relatively regular. I haven't heard of anything involving significant personal injury, but certainly damage to vehicles. Um, two involving my own family over the 14 years we've been here, and they're fairly careful drivers and know the road well. Thank you very much indeed, Councillor Ellingworth. And um, lastly, at the moment, we've got Councillor McEwen. If, if any other Councillors would... 
convener, sorry, could I come in? I, I've actually put two cues in already. I'm not sure if my chat box is working. I've got a little circle occurring to the right, so I'm not sure if these are coming through to you. OK, um, Councillor Ron, I'll go to Councillor McEwen and then I'll come straight back to you for your Thank questions. You if that's OK. Um, yes, sorry about that. Councillor McEwen, any of your questions for Mr Barrett, please? Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Mr. Barrett, and thank you very much for your presentation and for some of the the, the media and other things that other residents uh, up, up this road have, have sent to us on this committee. I found them very useful. I'm a local councillor, of course, Loch Marley, other side of Loch Marley from you, and I have driven this road, and I understand the, the steep burn at the beginning of this road because when it's in spate, it floods the cottages below it. And the caravan site at Marley, which I've had plenty of residents on to me about, that's nothing to do with this planning application. So I'm aware of your area, and yes, it is a road where I've had to reverse because of the council bin lorry, and had to reverse up a, up the road backwards into into a field entrance. Uh, luckily, luckily, I was in a in a higher vehicle at the time, not my own. The questions I have actually specifically around, you know, you mentioned the Catherine Trail, which is a path. And you mentioned that the only way that one of these properties is going to be uh, upgraded in, in any time by anybody and for any purpose would be that the actual Catherine Trail itself would have to be upgraded by any developer. And that, therefore the Catherine Trail correct. may possibly need to be shut, would be possibly need to be shut. Uh, I think the, the, in your the opinion, shows... since you live in the area, so in, in your opinion within the area, if the Catherine Trail did need to be shut to upgrade it, are there alternatives for walkers during that construction phase? Uh, I don't know what provision uh, will be made for walkers uh, during the construction. Certainly the, the plan shows that a new um, metalled road will be put in between uh, the U115 and that cottage. And that when completed, the Catherine Trail will pass right by the windows of the cottage. Um, but what provision there may be for um, uh, diverting the trail during the construction, uh, I'm not aware of anything. OK, I'll ask officers that later on as well then. And the other question I have for you, you know, the report talked about holiday accommodation, which I see actually as a, a term of short term lets. Um, it would be a more appropriate term that's used within reports. And yeah. I just want to know, are you aware within uh, your area and down towards Kinloch of how many other properties in the area are currently used as short-term lets? Um, I, can, I can only think of one, uh, Linduff Cottage, which uh, seems to be in uh, short-term let, but th there may be others that have, uh, have not come to my attention. OK, I can ask you for that as well. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr Barrett, and thank you for your time. OK. Thank you. Um, and uh, Councillor Brown, I'll, co I'll come back to yourself uh, right now. Um, there are no further questions, so I will take the uh, Councillor Brown's no, no, last question. No, no, yeah. So it's a thank you, Convener. Sorry, I, I seem to have a problem with this chat function. I don't know what the zero means at the end, but something's gone wrong. It so, just means um, it hasn't been sent, I would, I would <laughs> assume. Um, but if, Councillor Ron, if you could, and I can see that there's some more questions coming forward. Right. If councillors could put their questions in the chat box, box reasonably swiftly, then that, that way we're not holding Mr. Mr Barrett on for longer than necessary. So um, Councillor Braun, and then we will go to um, Councillor Barnacle and then Councillor Brock. Thank you. Thank you, convener, and, and thank you, Mr. Barrett, for your um, your submission this morning. Uh, I, I like Councillor McEwen, I'm on the local council, but I don't live local to this part. Um, but I have three three very quick questions, and my first question really is: I have driven the road myself, part of the road, the the, the part you're talking about. Um, I'm, I'm wondering: is this an unclassified road? What's the situation uh, in the winter time? Is it does it get treated in any way, shape, or form? Um, I'm thinking about uh, black ice and, uh, and frost on the road. Is, it, is there any sort of gritting done on this road or not? It it, it does uh, get ice on the steep bit. The uh, the council does grit from time to time, though on occasions the gritting lorry is unable to get up the hill. <laughs> and uh, for that reason, um, there is a, a community snowplow available at the at the bottom of the hill to attract to a tractor to clear the road uh, where the gritter can't get to. 
Right, so that's, that's answered my, my part of my second question. But that, that community snow plow doesn't grit, I take it, does it? No, no, it just clears the snow, which can so get up it, to 10 feet deep on the top of the hill. And it can still be very slippery. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah. It's, all, it's, it's always icy at the first frost. OK, fine. And my, and my other question, which was, th was going to be the third question, comes back to something you were talking about with Councillor Simpson, about if two cars meet, you have, one's got to reverse, and presumably uh, reversing a stranger not knowing where to go. Could they potentially be reversing into a blind bend? Yes, they could be reversing into a blind bend, uh, or they could be reversing into a ditch, which will drop them down to you know, to rest on the sump. Fine. Okay, fine. Thank you very much for those for those answers. Thank you, Camilla. Yeah, Councillor Moran. Um, Councillor Barnicott, your question, please. Uh, morning, Mr. Barrett. Um, just. Um, setting aside the issue of the road at the moment, I share your concerns and those of Councillor Shires, who's emailed the committee. Um, but um, you've alleged that the farm buildings are not redundant. Presumably the applicant, which is the farm, um, can manage without them should this development go ahead. Um, and I'm just asking whether the residents are against the concept of the steading conversion for holiday development if the road access question could be resolved in some other way. Um, are you actually against the concept of uh, a steading conversion for holiday accommodation? I don't think that there's a fundamental uh, objection to that, although its consequences could uh, cause a number of inconveniences be up above and beyond the road access. Uh, but I don't think it's a, it's a NIMBY object to anything being done at all uh, kind of uh, attitude. And uh, your question about the, um, the, the buildings being redundant and or being able to be uh, used or not used by the farm, um, they have a requirement for that um, type of building and they are constructing a new one to replace this one, which is uh, say alleged as being redundant, although it's still currently in use. OK, thank you. Thank you very much indeed. And uh, thank you very much, uh, Councillor Brock, for letting me know the question has been answered. So, so Mr Barrett, that's all the questions. Uh, um, come through from councillors. You've uh, certainly been put through the, the mill a little bit there. Lots of questions for you, but thank you very much for your deputation today and for your time. Oh, okay, no, you're welcome. And, and anything you need, that's fine. Thank you. Um, okay, so that then brings us on to the second deputation. Um, and this is on behalf of the agent. So maybe we've got Mr. Robert Johnson and Mr. George Gunn, I believe, or we have them, uh, them both. So we have the agent and the applicant. Um, available again. Um, are you both with us? Can you hear me okay? Uh, uh, yes, I'm here. Uh, sorry, I, I'm sorry, I didn't quite pick up the, the name. Who's who's that? <laughs> um, my name's Robert Robert Johnston from Mackenzie Strickland, um, the agent. Yes, hello, Mr. Johnston. Thank you very much for the, for clearing that. Um, is Mr. George Gunn um, with you, or is he phoned in separately, or? I am I am phoning in separately. Separately, so you are both there. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for confirming that. Unfortunately, all we see is a little blue screen, uh, a little blue um, circle, um, and, and it's difficult to know who's who. So um, thank you very much indeed. Um, the same format applies to yourself as, as did um, for, for Mr Barrett. I'll pass you over to Councillor uh, Bob Braun, who's the Vice Convener, and he'll go through the, the timing of it, and then you'll come back to me and other councillors for uh, questions if you're agreeable to that. Thank you very much indeed. Over to Councillor Brown. Uh, thank you, Convener. Could I just clarify one point actually on standing orders now? We have two uh, people to speak. We have up to 20 minutes now, and my understanding is. Is that correct? I believe that's right now. Each has 10 minutes if they wish. That was my understanding, but if I could yeah. ask uh, officers to confirm that, please. I believe that's right. Committee services. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Fogg, are you available just to, to confirm that? Convener, can I defer to, um, yeah, I believe that's correct, but I don't have them in front of me. I wonder if Danny could uh, uh, answer the point. Yeah, I think that's correct. 
Certainly. Mr Williams, could you do that? Uh, apologies to everybody, but there has been a, a recent change in standing orders and we just want to make sure that we've got it correct and, and that we're not uh, causing any issues. So, uh, Mr Williams, could you confirm that, please? Yes, apologies for the delay. I just want to check through the standing orders again myself just to make sure I had everything, everything right. Um, yeah, that is the case that we, um, between what this deputation between the uh, two deputies, we will be allowed 20 minutes. Okay. Thank, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, convener. Right. Okay. So, Mr. Johnson and Mr. Gunn, I hope you can both hear me. Yes. 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 Fine. Okay. Now you have up to 20 minutes to speak between you, if you wish. Um, I will give you a warning at the 19-minute mark. Should we get to that point? Um, but um, I will start the clock as soon as I hear either one of you start speaking. Obviously, it's up to you how you divide the time up between you. Um, okay. So we'll start when, when when you wish to start. We'll start the clock. Uh, okay, um, I, I think it's probably um, sensible that I speak first. Uh, my name is Robert Johnston. I'm the agent for the the, the applicant, Mr. Gunn. Um, uh, good morning to the convener and uh, the elected members. Thank you for your time uh, this morning. Um, clearly, there's a, there's a lot of passion from from the the, the neighbouring uh, road users, in particular. Um, Something that I, I think is maybe worth uh, starting off with is um, the the application that's before you this morning is, is a has has taken quite a bit of effort to to get uh, this far. Um, if the if if you refer to the papers, you, you'll see that we uh, two two and a half years ago now submitted a pre-planning consultation to Carstenton Ross Council and received very useful feedback. Um, from the council, uh, uh, from, from from the planning officer, and uh, that uh, ultimately culminated in a planning application, which uh, we were hoping would get support, um, but uh, unfortunately the the, the officer uh, was unable to support certain aspects of that application. We had a, a very useful, very helpful, very very. Um, uh, meaningful debate uh, and discussion with the officer. Ultimately, we withdrew that application, taking on board uh, the comments that we received, and we um, uh, sort of regrouped and 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 amended the design. Had further dis discussions and dialogue with Perth and Ross Council Planning Department um, to better understand their concerns, and we held a a. A, a community meeting. The, the neighbours were invited to to attend the farm, um, so that we could better understand their concerns. Um, and it was very clear that um, the, the the primary concern is is clearly about the road. Um, there were other concerns, of course, um, such as noise and the management of the buildings. Route builders, uh, mess from vans and vans blocking access and such like. Um, and, and we took we took on board those concerns uh, and and tried to address as many of those as we we possibly could and ultimately we uh, submitted a, a revised planning application um, uh, and and we've gone through a, an extensive uh, dialogue with Perth and Kinross Council Planning Department in particular, but also with uh, the Roads Department to see what we could um, sensibly do. A, a, a roads uh, impact analysis was done uh, to measure the frequency, type of traffic uh, over a number of weeks. That was presented to the Roads Department and ultimately uh, we, we received support uh, from roads. Um, we do recognise the, the concerns that the neighbours have. Uh, absolutely, you couldn't fail to. Um, and there's there's been some interesting comments about, about the unsuitability of the road. The, the applicant can only deal with uh, the aspect of the road that he has control over. Um, uh, Mr. Gunn's land extends to the south, and and a number of passing places as part of a separate planning application are proposed and have been granted. And and we understand that uh, should this application be consented, those passing places would be installed on the land that Mr. Gunn can actually control. Um, there's a couple of little comments about um, the, the Catarin Trail um, and, and does it need to be closed whilst this is going on? No, it doesn't. The, the, the proposal is to uh, build a, 
a temporary road in the field to the south of the Catarin Trail, so so that that particular unit can be uh, developed without the Catarin Trail being closed. Uh, so a, a, a haul road would be put into the field to the south to allow men and machinery and materials to be delivered. Uh, the Catarin Trail would be kept open. Eventually, that road would be would revert back to field uh, for coos and sheep and barley and goodness knows what else. Um, and the Catarin Trail uh, would be upgraded uh, to to permit vehicular access. We have to have vehicular access under the building regulations to that building for firefighting purposes and to empty the septic tank. Um, so whilst that road, whilst the Catherine Trail is being upgraded, the the Hall Road can be used by pedestrians and cyclists. So there's there's not a circumstance where the Catherine Trail would be closed during the the, the, the this work. Um, there's a little comment that was made by um, Mr. Barrett about the, the access um, and and passing places and why are they being done on the the bit of road um, that that is clear. Well, actually, passing places have to be on parts of uh, the road where there is extensive visibility uh, to the left and to the right, so that vehicles can see a car is coming and they can they can pull in. Um, so, so that that's that's why they're on that bit of road, and that's the only bit of road that Mr. Gunn has control over. But there are actually very little. Um, uh, additional traffic movements as demonstrated by the, 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 the traffic plan that has been carried out. Um, and whilst I recognise, because I stay very rurally and I stay up a dirt track, there are occasions where you do have to reverse. I actually find that when, when tourists are using uh, roads that they're not familiar with, they actually take more care than people who are familiar, in, in, in my opinion. I've, I've had a couple of close shaves on, on my own track and on my own access road uh, between Strathtay and, 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 and Weem. And invariably, uh, local people uh, take care on bends, um, but, but people who are not familiar drive along at a snail's pace, um, much to the frustration of locals, in, in my experience. So uh, I do understand the concern, but, but, but I think there's a different way of, of, of looking at it. There's a little comment also about the redacted bat survey. Uh, in all honesty, I, I've no idea why that certain aspects of it have been redacted. It certainly wasn't redacted, and I, I can give you my word, it was not redacted um, when it left my desk. Um, it must have been redacted by others, I assume by person can most central planning department for, for reasons only known to them, but it cert certainly wasn't done by us. Um, in, 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 in my summary, um, I, I, I'm very proud of, of what we've, we've, we've tried to achieve here. I've, I've um, welcomed the dialogue that we've had with the planning department. It's, it's been uh, thoroughly useful and, and, and very constructive. Um, and I think this is a, a really nice way to, to expose a, a really nice historical building that admittedly isn't listed, but is utterly swallowed up by a, a gigantic steel shed, pretty brutally, uh, I have to say, architecturally back in the 70s in all likelihood. It's a great chance to reinstate this building and, and preserve it and um, supplement it with, with additional um, new build elements to, to allow the, 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 the facility to function. And, 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 and finally, I just wanted to mention a concern that was made about construction traffic. If, if the, the councillors uh, have uh, reviewed what we've submitted, we actually have produced at this early stage uh, an illustration of how we see this um, development being managed on site to make sure there is no vehicular traffic blocking the site. Some, some uh, neighbours had some bad experience. Uh, from um, some some of the, the contractors previously, um, we're proposing to create a, a marshalling yard in one of the fields to make sure that the contractors are off-site. They're not blocking the road. There isn't a potential for conflict, and all of the contractors will be required to sign up to that. So uh, we, we 
we are trying as best we can to, to recognise that. There's always going to be a rogue guy in a white van who's going to throw his litter out the bloody van, and, and that just happens. But we're doing our, our best to, to, to try and manage that. Um, that, that, that. That's all I'd like to see this morning. Um, uh, hopefully, uh, we can uh, secure your support. Thank you very much, Mr. Johnson. Did Mr. Gunn wish to say anything? Uh, just a couple of small points, if I may, please. Um, is that okay? Yes, please go ahead. Okay. Well, uh, in relation to the the, the bossy that has been uh, mentioned several times, uh, the bossy was in a very poor state of repair, and um, we had to either let it go or secure the roof. So we secured the roof and made it watertight. And um, that gave us the opportunity to uh, do a bit more to it uh, over last winter. And we, we have not had anyone staying in it other than one uh, veterinary student uh, prior to the um, September when we had done completed the renovation and we put it on the market through Airbnb just for, uh, for short term lets. Um, in the situation in the spring, we had a, a female veterinary student who was uh, doing night lambing. That meant she worked during the night and she wanted somewhere quiet to uh, sleep during the day. So she slept in the partially renovated bossy. Um, that was the only occupancy until September, as I say, when I put it on the market. Uh, one other point, uh, the buildings are completely redundant. Uh, I, I absolutely have no idea how anyone can say that they're in constant use. Uh, we have corrugated lean-to sheds that are falling down. Uh, they are uh, of no use for, for anything, really. The outer area of the quadrangle, which is the traditional old buildings, which are, are very nice buildings, have not been used for years. One of them was has, has the end knocked out of it and, and some hay bales were put in there, have been put in there from time to time, but other than that, they're just unusable. In the central quadrangle area, which is uh, we, we have used for housing up to uh, 20 cattle during the winter, um, it, it's really not practical to do that because the roof leaks so badly where it joins the the uh, traditional buildings that it in the rain uh, comes in um, and that's it's just not good and the feeding is in, is, is almost impossible uh, and we have tried to store grain in it we we uh, we try to use that at harvest time but it's it it leaks and therefore is unsuitable for that as well so unfortunately the buildings are, are not in any way uh, functional or usable thank you Thank you very much, Mr. Gunn. Thank you both. I'll hand you back to the convener. Thank you very much, Councillor Braun, um, and thank you for the, uh, the deputations and, and answers to some, some questions there from both uh, Mr. Johnson and Mr. Gunn. And gentlemen, if you're uh, okay, we have a couple of questions coming up in the chat box for um, councillors that would like to ask you some questions. So hopefully you're, you're happy to answer these. And can I say to councillors, could you please put your queue in the uh, meeting box reasonably quickly so that we, we know just and, and can get through this quite smoothly. Okay, Councillor Wilson, you're, you're first up and can you ask who you, who you want to ask the question of, whether it's Mr. Johnson or whether it's Mr. Gunn or whether it's both, um, when you, at the beginning of your questions, please. Uh, firstly, Councillor Wilson, thank you. Thanks, convener. Gentlemen, thank you for your presentation. My question is to both of you, and it's not about the road, it's about the current buildings and the proposed use of new buildings. Um, uh, to some extent, Mr Gunn has approached this already. Um, I, the current buildings, I think, Mr Gunn, you said, are in partial use, but you have they've got building defects in them that make that, that difficult. That's my interpretation. I took out what you've said. Is that my interpretation correct? Uh, they're virtually not in use at all. Um, we we sometimes uh, no, I did unload say they were in partial use, but the problem is that they 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 have well, defects. We, is that correct? Un that is correct. We unload fertilizer there. Uh, that's about all we do. 
OK, um, in, in regard to the new building, which has been constructed on, on if I might say, the other side of the burn, um, and the issue of uh, heavy lorries, big, potentially 40 tonne lorries, offloading materials and supplies there, presumably feedstuffs and, and, and other material. Um, what is what what is that correct? Is that building does that building require to be access accessed by large HGV vehicles that are a problem, at least a problem to get over the, the, the bridge over the burn? The um the, the the burns well the bridge is 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 on a bend and so it's uh, we, uh, only a limited size of lorry can come up and uh, when us and other people have material other people in the valley who live be across the burn have um, materials that need to come up then yes it is it has been unloaded at Gormac. Uh, on that side of the road or on the other side of the road uh, and uh, transported up in smaller vehicles to the uh, to uh, the buildings belonging to ourselves and the buildings belonging to our neighbours. OK, and do you make any attempt to advise the suppliers that the access the bridge is unsuitable for um, very large vehicles and that they should take account of that and send something a bit smaller? Uh, to avoid this and uh, what seems to be unnecessarily loading and unloading and extra vehicle movements on every occasion we do that but there uh, and 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 there have do been they pay, do they pay attention mr gunn <laughs> yeah as far as i'm aware they always pay attention uh, but we have helped out neighbors in on some occasions because uh, they clearly haven't instructed the uh, the drivers accordingly okay and my final point, convener, is that the new build, the, the new building, um, new construction of the, the, the building, is that to replace the functionality of the old building, which, as you've said, is, is let's not use the word redundant, but seen better days and has a number of leaks and is only used for a limited purpose. Absolutely. I think, uh, I think perhaps I can come in here, Councillor Wilson. The, 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 there are a, there are a number. If you permit me, there are a number of buildings already on the site. Uh, and if I can just run through those very quickly, there's there's a very large U-shaped historical stone-built setting, very pretty, very traditional arched openings uh, within the courtyard, which fundamentally you cannot see because back in the I think 17s, perhaps 18s. Uh, the original owner or a previous owner of the farm uh, erected a gigantic steel uh, portal frame right within the middle yep. of the courtyard. So, so the, the whole of that courtyard stone traditional building has been swallowed up. You just cannot see it. You can only see the arches and the small traditional window openings if you actually physically go into the building. Uh, so we, we have um, six units that are proposed within that traditional setting. Um, Beyond that, on the periphery of that U-shaped stone setting, there are a number of steel uh, and aluminium corrugated, corrugated asbestos type uh, agricultural buildings, uh, arguably very traditional, but built in a, and, and George hopefully will forgive me for saying this, but in a fairly haphazard uh, old firmer type uh, manner using log pole pine and bits of wood from here, there, and pretty much everywhere. They're, they're in a pretty parlous state, rattling uh, all over the place in the wind, water pouring in, uh, so on and so forth. So, uh, the, the three new buildings, the three new build elements of, of the project, uh, uh, to demolish those uh, and replace them with new buildings. Uh, but there are a further two buildings, one one being the little bothy, as we call it, which Mr. Gunn has already covered off in terms of what's happening to it at the moment. And there is the building, uh, a little farm labourer's cottage, I suspect, historically at the far end of the Catherine Trail, which is uh, pretty ruinous, stone, stone built, slate roof, roof, roof is collapsing, um, dirt floor. Uh, front door to We're getting able to hear you. 
you, you're breaking up, um, um, Mr. Johnson. Uh, hello. Yeah, Can my apologies, Mr. I, I, we could hear part of that, but not all of it, unfortunately. Um, okay. um, I, I think we got the gist of it, but um, I, I'm not sure if you could maybe, I don't know how off the cuff you were being, but if you could maybe try and re repeat a little bit, just at the end there, just the last minute or so. Um, well, I was, uh, forgive me, I, I wasn't moving around. It's the joys of the Vodafone, I'm afraid. Um, uh, I, was, I was basically just saying there are six six buildings within this steading that we want to expose and reinvigorate. Uh, there are there are three new build buildings on the footprint from home steel, log pole, pine, wooden uh, steadings that are thoroughly falling apart with rattly tin and so on and so forth. They're not salvageable in any way at all and they're of no architectural merit. And the other two buildings are the bottom which Mr. Dunn has already covered off and the, the the partly ruinous um, the, the farm labourers cottage at the far end of the Catherine Trail, uh, about six or seven hundred metres from the, the rest of the buildings. Thank you, Mr Johnson. I've one very short supplementary. Did you consider the application just to renovate the two um, bothies and the, the actual farm steading and just demolish the the the, the, the the 1940s, 50s or 60s buildings and leave a, a, a much more open landscape. Did you consider that as a proposal? I know what's before us. I just want to know if you consider yes, yes. a smaller so, development. So, uh, we, we did actively consider that, Councillor Wilson, actually. The, the, the reality is um, for, for the development to have significant or, or enough fi financial um, clout, uh, it, it has a sort of a critical mass um, of of occupancy that's required. It's a very substantial development, uh, as 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 I'm sure we all appreciate. And and uh, if you consider having done a number of developments of this type over the years, uh, something that a lot of applicants, uh, not Mr. Gunn, because he's been well advised, I think. Um, but but we we need. Uh, building uh, developments like this uh, need a, a lot of things, and it's been quite a political hot potato recently. They need staff, uh, and the staff need accommodation, and they need space to uh, have a shower and go to the toilet and and uh, store bed sheets and tables and chairs and crockery and linen and and all those things. So so we we needed additional accommodation for. Um, not for staff accommodation, but, but to house things like boilers and I don't know the proper technical term, but that like the cleaning cart that the, 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 the changeover people use to, to, to clean out buildings after, after they've been occupied. So it makes sense to have these six large steading buildings converted because they are very pretty and very architecturally uh, attractive. Um, and 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 the the other buildings are 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 two are being brought back into use in a more positive way, and there's three new build elements. One of which one bit of which is the 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 ancillary building or the ancillary accommodation, which is attached to 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 one of the residential units, simply to make sure we have space for plant and heating and hot water and and so on and so forth. The the the, the proposal is to have a central heating unit uh, and create a, a districting system. So, so each of the buildings won't have their own boiler, their own hot water cylinder in the conventional sense. Everything will be centrally controlled and distributed uh, using heat pumps to each of the buildings. So, so we need that extra accommodation. And, and, and if you look at the history of the application, uh, you, you'll see that that was quite a sensitive thing that, that the, the planning officer wasn't desperately keen on in the first instance. Okay. Well, th thank you. Th 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 thank you very much. I've taken up quite a bit of time. Thanks, convener. Thank you, gentlemen.
Thank you, Councillor Wilson. Thank you for the, your answers there. Um, the next councillor is Councillor Illingworth. Again, I'm going to ask councillors, please, could you put a queue in the chat box um, sooner rather than later? Um, that way we, we can monitor this properly at the moment. I have Councillor Illingworth and Councillor McEwen. Um, if there's not going to be much more coming up after that, I, I will I'll finish it at that. So if councillors could please put queues in uh, reasonably sharply. Thank you. Councillor Illingworth, can your questions, please? I've got two questions, and I think they could be answered by, by either the agent or the applicant. Um, my first question is that um, well, one of the concerns raised um, previously was that during uh, snowy periods, the road would be impassable or, or difficult due, due to snow. Are you expecting most of your business to come during this period? I doubt if we're expecting much business to come during snowy periods. And uh, yes, the road uh, is no different to any other road around there. It, it can get uh, blocked, uh, but we do have a plough and we do uh, uh, open it regularly for the benefit of everybody. Thank you. And my second question is, um, do you think that this development will create economic benefits uh, around the area and will it create any jobs directly? It will create jobs directly, uh, there's no doubt about that and I'm very keen on uh, giving jobs to local people so uh, that is what we would intend to do. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you Councillor Illingworth. Uh, Councillor McEwen, your questions please. Uh, thank you very much, and thank you, Mr. Johnson, Mr. Graham, and, and thank you for clarifying the, the the input that you'll have for the Catherine Trail to keep it open. Obviously, as a, a core path, and yes, uh, it's very important. And th thanks for that information. The question I have: I noticed you know your passing places application that got passed by officers, and I noticed in that application that you were doing that on your own land, and you know I think that's very admirable, and I think it's proper that that got passed. Uh, and I appreciate that the rest of the road is not under your control as such because you do not own the land next to the road. But the question I have is whether Mr. Gunn or Mr. Johnson on his behalf, whether you have had any consultation with landowners in the area to put passing places on, on their land, because obviously you could put an application in, but obviously you would need their permission to then finally put passing places in. Uh, yeah, I mean, you, you, you're, you're right. I mean, we can we can submit a planning application on another party's land um, at any time, and goodness knows it's happened to me over the years. Um, uh, as, far, as far as I'm aware, no, no, no consultation has has um, no dialogue has been entered into um, regarding that possibility. I, I think um, the councillors can probably see this morning that there's. There's um, significant concerns concerns about that. It's certainly something that uh, I'm sure Mr. Gunn would be open to. Um, I, I suspect, however, and it is just a suspicion, um, that there would be a degree of resistance to that because, um, despite uh, the, the the comments that Mr. Barrett made, um, I would suggest there's a there's a there's a there's a body of the the, the immediate neighbours who simply don't want this to happen. Not not in uh, I don't want to use not not in the NIMBY way, but there are there are concerns about uh, all, all sorts of things from uh, increased traffic to swallowing up um, internet use um, and, and and various other objections. So. My, my suspicion, and it is just a suspicion, is that the, 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 the other neighbours simply don't want this to happen. And um, whilst additional back passing places on the road would be advantageous, um, I, I suspect they wouldn't be willing to give up their land to do that, okay. despite the fact that it would be to everybody's benefit. OK, thank you. Um, does that answer your question, uh, Councillor McKeon? 
Yes. Yes, it does. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, and um, last one then would be Councillor Waters. Your question, please. Uh, thank you, thank you, convener. Uh, thanks for your deputation. Uh, you mentioned you mentioned earlier on in the deputation that you had uh, completed a transport survey uh, on yes. usage over a two-week period. Um, yes. I don't know if you shared that with the council, whatever. I certainly can't see it anywhere. Yes. But I wonder no, if you could just give, was, give a brief. It was, uh, we 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 carried out um, the the councillors will have seen. You'll have to forgive me, I don't know the technical term, but the sort of black rubber bands that get put down on the road, um, you know, that, that we all drive over uh, from time to time and wonder what the hell's going on. Uh, so so there was, a, there was a, a road traffic survey was carried out by Millard Consulting from Dundee, um, and they presented their findings uh, to the roads department, um, specifically in relation to um, existing vehicular traffic, which was incredibly low uh, at that part of the site. Um, and uh, there was dialogue with the roads department in relation to visibility displays. We were concerned that at the junction from the development onto the public road, albeit the old unclassified public road, that, that we would struggle to meet the visibility displays simply because of the, the physical nature of the, the, the road at the point of the the, the sharp left-hand turn as you're heading north towards the bridge beyond the site. Um, and we were able to demonstrate that simply because of the physical nature of the road um, and the bad bends that the traffic slowed down uh, to well below 30 miles an hour in order to navigate those bends. Therefore, the visibility display at the access to our site could be reduced because traffic is naturally at a low speed because of the bend. Um, so that, that all of that information was absolutely shared uh, with the roads department at the time of uh, the application. That's great. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor James. I see you slipping in at the end there. Um, so once Councillor James has asked the question, I will ask if there are any final questions. But I, I would like this to sort of be the last one. I think Mr. Johnson and Mr. Gunn have answered uh, many questions on this. So Councillor James, your question, please. Yeah, thanks very much, convener. Uh, and sorry for slipping this one in at the end. Uh, I, I was pretty much all the questions I was going to ask have been asked by other councillors. However, nobody's actually asked about pedestrians. We're talking about traffic and cars. We, we want sustainable uh, transport and sustainable links. Uh, I'm very, very familiar with this road uh, as I walk it regularly. Uh, and I've been nearly knocked over regularly. Uh, with my five dogs, um, has has the um, applicant uh, or, or Mr Johnson, the agent, have you actually done a, a pedestrian survey? I know you've done a traffic survey and put the, the lines down the road, but have you physically stood there and, and, and seen the amount of pedestrians that actually use this road? Uh, no, that, 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 that hasn't been done. Uh, uh, it wasn't requested uh, by the roads department. It's not something that's, that's, that we we considered. Uh, although we're obviously uh, acutely aware of the number of people that use the um, the Catherine Trail, uh, and I, I myself have used the Catherine Trail and walked past this site uh, in the past. So it's 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 heavily used by um, walkers, obviously, and mountain bikers these days. Um, but but in terms of uh, your question, Councillor, has a, a, a pedestrian survey been done uh, from the junction down onto the Blair Gowdy Dunkel Road all the way up to this site? The answer is uh, no, no, that, that survey hasn't been done, wasn't, wasn't requested. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Right, there are no more questions coming forward. So, Mr. Johnson and Mr. Gunn, thank you very much indeed for your time this morning, and thank you for answering answering the questions. Um, uh, and we'll be able to let you go, and we'll put it on to the next stage of the committee, which is for councillors to ask questions of officers and of the report. So, um, if the committee could start to put um, <laughs> cues into the box. For questions, then we will go to questions for officers and they're starting to come in thick and fast. Thank you very much indeed for doing this promptly. Um, so, Councillor Simpson, you are first and then Councillor Waters. 
Uh, thank you very much indeed, convener. If, if I might ask um, road, road um, transport colleagues um, perhaps a question, uh, leading on from Councillor James's question, um, I think it's easy to forget that um, there are other road users other than motorists, and I wouldn't like anybody to forget cyclists, uh, road users, and um, my new pursuit of pram pushers uh, using the road. And I'm very concerned there has been no regard given to other road users. I note on page 77, paragraph 6, it says that in the interests of pedestrian and traffic safety, and I wonder if officers should give us some idea of how pedestrians and um, uh, cyclists, old men with prams, uh, are going to have their safety improved by any of the matters considered in this paper. OK, thank you for the question. I'm going to start with Mrs Clondliffe, but maybe that would actually have to go to uh, to Lachlan. I'm not sure if that falls under roads, but um, Mrs Clondliffe, are you available to, to put a first point on this? Sure. Um, yes, I mean, I think uh, Mr McLean will probably answer a bit more in terms of the, the, the traffic. I mean, we have to look at this. It, there is no way you could put a pavement all the way up this road. Um, there are some things that are just not reasonable, but we have looked at it. I mean, I have to say I visited the site and uh, I actually cycled to get to, to the site um, just because I was able to see that bit more when I was getting there and been able to look around a bit more. And I was careful on the road. I met only one car the whole time and there wasn't any issue with it. Um, I think what we're looking at here is the buildings already exist apart from the three new built and it is an opportunity um, that is here to actually have these brought back into use, these historical buildings, which are all things that we are very keen to see generally with our policies within our local development plan, similarly for new businesses. Um, but there, we won't be able to do everything. We won't be able to have space for cyclists, space for pedestrians, space for people pushing prams, cars, as well as having agricultural vehicles. We have to look at it as best as we can. And we have had a look at it and think it is acceptable to have this. Yes, there's going to be some conflict, but it is acceptable conflict. Um, and that would be the comment I would start off with on this. And perhaps Mr McLean can add a bit more to that. Thanks, Anne. Yeah, I think you're right. Um, a lot of our roads are, if I use the term shared use, um, we've got a lot of roads that we've dis um, designated um, walking, cycling friendly. Um, we have people who will be in motor cars, well, people who are on bikes, walking, um, or have prams. Um, I myself have um, pushed my nieces and nephews along the road. Um, there will be occasions where I have found it difficult to find a, a spot to get off onto the verge, but I think there has to be that common courtesy between both parties in terms of there might be occasions where you can't get onto a verge um, as quickly as you can, but you'll try and get make that effort to get out of the way of the, the vehicles. Um, but I would see that this road, as Anne said, I mean, she cycled up, up, up and down the track or up and down the road. Um, I myself went up the track, up the road um, and drove it and met one other vehicle. Um, and on that occasion, there was space for both of us to pass. Um, so, yes, um, there may be concerns with um, walkers and um, cyclists on the road, um, but I do feel that there will be opportunities for them to be passed safely. Might I ask a supplementary question to that, convener? Um, um, can I I'll go to uh, Mr Smith first, if that's OK, Councillor Simpson, because he's got a, an additional answer and then your supplementary. Um, I'm happy to take that. Mr Smith. Yes, I, I would just uh, sort of maybe clarify that in relation to this proposal and the recommendation that we make that we are actually indicating that passing places would need to be put in place and those passing places in themselves would obviously give opportunity for either vehicles to use them or for pedestrians, cyclists or other people using different modes of transport to more easily pass on that section. So as you've heard, we have considered it and there are quite clear uh, ways in which safety would be improved uh, along that stretch where the passing places were to be put in place. Thanks. Thank you. Councillor Simpson, your uh, supplementary question, please. Just very briefly, in relation to what has been said, would, uh, would officers consider this to be a route suitable to be designated as a green route, or would some sort of signage be helpful to alert? I think it's the, the 
drivers unfamiliar with this type of road, that there may be pedestrians and other road users in the way. Would there be any, any requirement or any suggestions that might be a good idea? Thank you for the question, um, um, Mr McLean, and then to Mr Smith. Thank you. Um, with regard to making the road um, walking cycling friendly or having the designation for that, um, I'd recommend that the local elected members put forward that proposal um, to the traffic and network team for consideration. Um, I think that would be a worthy um, outcome um, and something that they want to do. Um, with regard to road traffic signs, um, yes, we can have um, road traffic signs that are erected um, that would signify that there are walkers um, within the road space. Um, we have a number of locations where we have that. Um, but if we were to have the, the, the designation of walking and cycling friendly, I wouldn't really see there to be a need for those warning signs as we were already warning the motorists um, that there will be walkers and cyclists within that, that space. Thank you. Mr Smith, do you have uh, additional information to add to that? Not, not, not really. I think just clarifying as well, Lachlan and I came in at exactly the same point there. It's the traffic and network team that, that members could could raise that with to see whether they would be in a position to identify it as a walking and cycle friendly route. Uh, but again, obviously everyone that's using the route, whatever mode they're using, should take due care and attention. And particularly those using vehicles uh, should be aware of people that are perhaps more vulnerable than them in their car or vehicle. Thank you. OK, Councillor Waters, uh, you're next on the list. For your question, please. Thank you. Thank you, convener. Just in relation to the uh, traffic uh, survey that was mentioned by the, the applicants, um, do we have any information over over what the current usage is on the on the road uh, as, and the projected usage would be um, if this if we were minded to pass this application? Thank you, uh, uh, Mr McLean. I think that's over to you. Thank you, convener, and thank you for the qu question, Councillor Waters. Yes, we do have the, the traffic count information um, that was um, undertaken by the applicant. Um, now, from the, the representations that have been made, um, there was a concern that it had been done during COVID times. Um, the survey was undertaken um, September 2020, um, just to make you aware of when that survey was undertaken. Um, looking at the data there, um, if I look at the daily flows um, southbound on the road there, um, we're looking at a maximum of around 45 vehicles um, that were recorded um, during that period. Um, and northbound there, um, I'm just flicking through the data just now, Roughly about 45 as well. So people are obviously it's tidal. There's people coming and going, um, leaving the site and then returning as well. Now, given that we have um, data um, during COVID times, um, what I wanted to do was um, give you a, a level of assurance um, with the, the traffic flows that are within the local area. Um, so what I did was I went to the um, TRIX um, database um, just to get a little bit more information um, regarding um, flows on the road. Um, so what I've done is um, looked at the number of properties that are up the, the U115. I've estimated that, uh, estimated that there will be 24 properties accessing the road. Um, now that's from the A923 all the way up to the, the top of the road. Um, so with that, um, what I've calculated that to be is nine properties within the village of Kinloch itself um, and a further 15 in the rural section. So if we take all 24 properties there, I estimate that there would be on a normal day um, likely to be about 120 trips arriving and departing on the road. So this would equate to a vehicle every five minutes within the, the busiest hour um, on that section. So if we add a further 11 holiday units to the road, um, I would estimate that this would increase to a total of 155 trips. Um, now, one thing I will say is that the, the data um, that I have obtained is between 7 o'clock in the morning and 9 o'clock at night. Um, so with the additional holiday trips, um, I would estimate that there would be um, a vehicle every 3 minutes and 45 seconds in the busiest hour. So if we take the proportion of traffic that is on the road once the development is complete, I would estimate that there is around 78% of the traffic would be associated with the current properties and 22 with the holiday units. So from the current estimated base um, out with COVID times, um, I would estimate that there would be an increase of 29% 
um, from the base associated with the holiday units. Now, one thing I will say is that we are going from a really low base um, on the road there um, in terms of um, trips going up and down there. Um, I mean, there might there was also concerns about the capacity on the road itself. Um, so what I did was I did a little bit more research in terms of um, capacity of a single track road. Um, and what we would estimate for a single track road is um, a trip that, that you could accommodate 100 to 300 vehicles per hour. Now, this was a bit of research undertaken by Richard um, Sweet um, in 2012 um, and was presented to the, the Trix Forum. Um, now, what you can see from that is that that's 100 vehicles um, per hour. Now, we're looking at, let me just go back to my spreadsheet here. Um, Now we're looking at, with the development in place, um, approximately 16 um, trips. So you can see that there is quite a bit of capacity in the road there if we were to take the 100 and go down to the 16 there. Um, so I would see that there is plenty of capacity in the road um, for the development to be accommodated. Thank you. I may have another question, but I'll give other people a chance to ask theirs and it may get answered in there. Thank you. OK, cheers. OK, thank you, uh, Councillor Waters. Um, Councillor James, uh, yours is next. Uh, thanks, Convener. And it kind of follows on from what Lachlan was saying there. Uh, I, I mean, <clears throat> when you're assessing this road, uh, I, I take it you were looking at, at the development end of the road where, where the three um, passing places were going to go. My concern would be at the access point of that road, actually in the village of Kinloch, uh, which I use regularly. You have um, housing down at that bottom end uh, who have no parking and therefore park on the road. Did you take this into consideration when you were looking at the safety of the road and, and you know, the use of, of this road? It, however small the increase is, it'll have a huge impact on, on that that in, or, or that access point at the bottom. Um, yes, again, over to Mr McLean, if you could answer that, please. Yes, I did. I, we have looked at the road in totality um, from the, the, the A923 at the bottom there where you're saying that there are um, residents parking on the road. Um, now, if I recall when I went up there, I didn't actually see any residents parked on the road. Um, there was a vehicle parked within the, the, the church or the graveyard entrance there. Um, but I And then there was another vehicle on the left hand side when you went up the hill and um, there was a couple of vehicles parked on the side and um, but they weren't actually on in the road space and um, so I didn't really see there being any issue at that point and um, when I visited the site. I think you might notice there'll be a difference at the moment but, you know there are there are houses multiple occupation at the bottom end uh, and the increase in parking at that end is quite noticeable of late um, it, it's, a, it's a huge concern I, I think that's where the, the the concern is at the bottom end and of course uh, around the corner as you come out of the village Sorry, Pastor James is this a question or are you um, making a comment sorry convener <laughs> My apologies, but I really would like to get all the questions answered if we could. Um, and certainly there will be time for comments, uh, I'm sure, afterwards. So um, thank you very much for your question, Councillor James. Um, Councillor Wilson, your questions, please. Thanks, Convener. A non-traffic, non-road question, a double-barreled question um, to the planners. What information have we received about an economic development that's supporting document to a lot of this is uh, the argument for having this is it's going to create wealth and enterprise in the countryside. Um, what what evidence have we had from the applicants about their business plan in that regard? And secondly, um, what uh, professional opinion? We've heard opinions about the buildings and their condition. What professional reports have we had on the buildings conditions, both at the farmsteading and the cottages? Thank you, Mrs. Conliffe. Could you answer both questions, please? Yes, um, we have received a business plan from the applicant, uh, which is quite a detailed business plan um, dated 2021. Um, we have had a look at that and 
indeed colleagues in economic development have also had a look at it and we are satisfied that it is a strong case that has been put forward and it will have great benefit in terms of um, the proposal and the number of units for the holiday accommodation in here and it, it said so in the report but it complies very much with our policy um, for diversification and rural businesses in that it meets all the criteria that we were looking to achieve. So in terms of that, we are more than satisfied in terms of economic development. Um, similarly, we have had information submitted with regard to the condition of the building and certainly I am no um, quantity surveyor, but looking at the buildings, you can see particularly the um, agricultural buildings, the condition that some of those are in. And it was explained by the um, owner of the site in his deputation this morning, the concerns over the structure of it and the the lack of um, waterproof within the, the site. Um, so certainly we are satisfied that everything is as it's submitted does comply and we were as I say supporting the proposal for the development. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and next we have Councillor McEwen and then Councillor Braun. He's messaged me uh, on my phone because his, um, his chat function is not uh, working. So first of all Councillor McEwen, then Councillor Braun and then Councillor Brock. Apologies Councillor Brock. I know it looks that, but Councillor Brown was before you. So, Councillor McEwen, first, please. Uh, thank you very much, Convener. Uh, Councillor Wilson brought up with uh, the residents earlier regarding the bridge going over the Lornity Burn and the fact that uh, heavy vehicles and damaged vehicles, that the current site is currently being used as an offload, and obviously that would change when the site would be developed. So, do we have any official? Uh, confirmation that this bridge is going to then be used sufficiently and safely and not to its damage. Uh, I think in such a rural location the council would find it difficult to know who damaged the bridge and we'd have to repair it ourselves. Uh, so is there, what's the assessment been on this bridge and the change of its use because of this development? And Mrs Conflith, could you, uh, could you come in please? Yeah, I mean what I would be saying is that the bridge is actually north of the application site effectively um, and what the proposal would not actually have an effect on that. Where we're looking at it and you certainly explained that very clearly that it's properties, um, sorry, lorries have come up and unloaded in the area that is currently used for um, the buildings of West Gormack Farm and then taking it further up the track. Now, clearly in terms of going further up the road for the um, farm that's up there that is in the ownership of the applicant here, then it will be for him on his land to look at areas where if something needs unloaded and taken up. Um, but what we're looking at here is very much a tourist development and for that red line site. And it's perhaps a bit of a red herring talking about the bridge in that way. For other residents, it will then be for them to sort that out. I mean, this is a public road that goes from the A923 all the way up here. Um, and we're now looking at it in and seeing well what might happen further up on a bridge because of a development which is not affected by that bridge because you don't need to go over the bridge to get to the site. So I'm slightly concerned that we may be straying into other issues which are not particularly relevant to what is before us today in planning terms. The, you know, forgive me and I obviously I take your advice uh, completely that this is a change of use of this site and it's a change of use that's resulting in that change of transport. Has that got no bearing on this application then? Is that? Um, we'll go to Mr Smith for an answer, but my understanding is that the, um, and I may have picked this up wrong from the deputations, that the concerns with the bridge were due to other, um, uh, other uh, concerns due to uh, other buildings rather than this particular application. But if I could go to Mr Smith for clarification and for his answer, please. Yes, thank you, convener, and just maybe to give some further clarity. Yet, um, Anne has given a, a, a fairly detailed answer in terms of the situation that this proposal that's before us does not require access up and over the bridge. Uh, and again, the deputation in itself, which was given, 
indicated that the, the applicant and himself, uh, who is the operator of the site currently and the, the operator of the, the wider agricultural use, it has measures in place that doesn't require uh, the large vehicles to service his facilities that he is working with delivery uh, parties etc to deal with that uh, and it may well be that other people that are maybe not as au fait with the difficulties that a vehicle may have in crossing that bridge have on occasion been helped out by the applicant but again as Anne was saying I would caution uh, over consideration of what may or may not happen uh, up at that bridge because of other activities unrelated to the proposal before us. Thank you very much for that. This is the reason we get to ask questions so that we can clarify these matters in our head. Thank you very much. Uh, no, absolutely, Councillor McEwen, and, and I'm happy for all questions to come forward so that we are making an informed decision. Um, uh, so, Councillor Braun, um, as I say, apologies to Councillor Braun, but Councillor Braun's uh, chat function doesn't seem to be working. Any message to me, and it, it came in at this point. So, we'll go to Councillor Braun and then to Councillor Brock. Yeah, my apologies to everyone. This is just seems to I'm, I'm presuming I'd have to reboot the whole system to get back in. So my apologies. Um, my question is for again for Mr. McLaughlin, I'm afraid um, he very kindly gave us some figures. He's mentioned figures online this morning. He sent some figures around <coughs> um, last night. I don't want to get bogged down in those, obviously, because they're there, they're there. But my question really is he's agreed that there's going to be an increase in traffic. Uh, and my point is, would he accept the fact that by increasing the volume of traffic, there is going to be an increase in the probability of a conflict of cars meeting head on, having to one to reverse the other? We're increasing the probability of that sort of conflict on the road. Uh, would you agree with that? Um, I see that Mrs. Collingwood would like to come in first, oh, so well, we'll do whatever. that. Um, um, Mrs. Collingwood would like to come in and then we'll go to Mr. McLean. Yeah, thank you, convener. Um, I just wanted to say before uh, Mr. McLean came in with all you know the details. Of of course, there's going to be an increase in traffic if you put in a new development, but you have to look at it as well that there was previously this is all farm agriculture, much larger buildings, um, much larger machinery utilising the road, um, so you, there is, that is then offset. But I go back to the argument again that this is a public road. We have a number of properties off it. And are we really looking to be saying there can be no more development on this road? It is in such a state. Now, that is not what we are getting from our experts in the road side of things. And I would just caution that we shouldn't be coming in too hard saying, you know, nothing can be happening here because it's going to increase the traffic. So that would just be the comment I would want to make before Mr. McLean comes in with all the details with regard to actual stats and figures. Thank you. OK, thank you. Mr. McLean. Uh, thank you, convener. Um, in its simplistic terms, um, Councillor Ballon, yes, you are increasing the probability of um, vehicles meeting one another. Um, what I've done is I've kind of um, I've done a, a further analysis um, to look at the, the busiest time on the road, um, and and what I estimate that to be is um, between seven uh, sorry five o'clock and six o'clock in the evening, um, where I would estimate there to be um, twelve vehicles um, arriving and departing in its current form, and with the holiday accommodation units there would be a further four vehicles there. Um, in its simplistic terms, in terms of what I would estimate there to be on the road and also um, the number of trips that would be going to and from the holiday units as well. Thank you for that. And my apologies for mispronouncing your surname. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> I should know. I should know better. I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you, convener. Uh, thank you, Councillor Brown. Uh, Councillor Brock, thank you for your patience and over to you, please. Thank you, convener, and um, no need to apologise, it's fine. Um, I just want to ask one question, and it's regarding the road, and I know there's been quite a various um, comments being brought up in that, um, but it has been brought that it's a, a concern that's come from many in the area, and quite rightly so. So the, the question I want to ask is, um, up until now, has there ever been anything raised in regard to of extra signage to be put up there to alert previously um, any dangers that may be uh, given it's the area going to the Catarin Trail and because some have mentioned near misses and whatnot I just wondered if there is any signage within the area on that roadway indicating that at the moment. 
Yes, uh, thank you, uh, Ms. McQueen. Over to you. Is is there any signage, or, or has there been any? Uh, yeah, is there any signage, Ms. Ms. McQueen? Thank you. Well, That's what I thought you were meaning, Councillor Brockby. Is there, and and do we know of any requests that have come forward for signage? Thank you, um, Convener. I am not aware of any requests. Um, it wouldn't come into my team. It would probably come into the traffic and network team. Um, they didn't make any um, negative comments about the, the proposal um, up at the site um, and they didn't give me any further information regarding um, your comment there or your question. Um, so I'm not aware of anything. Um, I'm, I'm not sure if some of the, the members who are um, present today, they might have had requests, um, but I am not aware of any um, that I can um, provide you with information with. Sorry. OK, that's fine. Thank you for that. Thank you. Uh, Councillor James, do you have a second question? I'm happy to come back to you. Thanks again, Convener. Um, uh, going back to something um, which was touched on earlier uh, by the applicant's agent, uh, he was asked about the BAT survey and why it was redacted. He said he had no idea and could only assume it was um, th that was uh, by our officers. Um, is that the case, please? Thank you, Mrs. Conlon. Could you answer the question, please? Uh, yes, Convener. Thank you, Councillor James. I, th I thought someone would be asking us this when it was raised earlier. Um, yes, it was redacted by the officers of Perthick and Ross Council, and it's because we are not allowed to disclose the location of protected species just to ensure that there's no malicious destruction on potential bat roosts identified in the ecological survey. So it's not just for this application, it's across the board. We ask for it even at validation stage um, and try and get things redacted. So it's for all um, potential, well, not just bat roots, but it could be for other species as well in terms of the ecological surveys. That's interesting. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Um, Councillor Braun, <laughs> I hate to say this, but we've got two queues that have just come up on the uh, on the chat here. Um, and, and I do have a question before Councillor Wilson comes in with his motion. Um, so I'm sorry, I haven't put that out there. Councillor Braun, do you have additional questions no, or no, is this it must, it just coming from before? It must just be a delayed function. I don't know what's happened. My, uh, I've got two queues suddenly appeared with, with no zeros after now, so I'm not sure if I'm working or not, but no, I don't. Uh, that's fine, thank you. I just wanted to make sure it wasn't a, a question. And uh, my apologies, Councillor Wilson, but I'm going to come in with a question. I didn't put a queue in the chat function to notify myself that I wanted to ask a question. So um, just bear with me. It was one point I wanted to ask, and I think this will be for Mrs. Conliffe. Um, there was a mention in the first deputation to previous um, applications being rejected based on traffic. Um, and it was, uh, Mr Barrett alluded to the fact that it was, it was strange that this was um, now coming forward with an increase in traffic. I was just wondering if there was any comment um, on any previous applications that, that maybe you could you could mention and, 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 and to that comment, please. Uh, yes, thank you, convener. Um, the one that is referred to in the report was 2007, and that was the refusal for a dwelling house. The reasons for refusal were primarily on houses in the countryside. Now, part of houses in the countryside does refer to an appropriate access within it, but it was to say it was the principle of it um, for that. And the only other one that I could find that was referenced in one of the letters of representation was with regard to a husky um, development or sorry for kenneling and exercise of um, husky dogs. It was way back in 2003, but again, this was, was refused and went to, um, was dismissed on appeal, but it seems again to refer primarily to, it included a house as well, and it was houses in the countryside. There was a mention with regard to road, but again, it was an element of the houses in the countryside policy. And that was all I could find um, in terms of the ones that have been referred to by deputations. So hopefully that answers your question, convener. It does. Thank you. OK, um, there are no more questions coming up. Yeah, um, convener, Ros, can I intervene? You can come forward. Yeah, yes, is this a question you'd like to ask, Councillor Barnacle? I've made three requests to put a question, but you've obviously not seen it. There's nothing coming up on my chat. My my apologies uh, for that. If you could uh, ask your question, um, uh, Councillor Wilson, if you could bear with us, I really do want to make sure that all questions are answered. Um, Councillor Barnacle, could you ask your questions, please? 
Thank you, Ross. Um, it was really around what you previously asked, but I just like clarity. Can this proposed development be accessed from the north over the uh, stone bridge? And has any thought been uh, put towards a weight limit on that bridge? Uh, I would imagine that would go to uh, Mrs Congliffe, if that's possible. I'm going straight to there because I'm not seeing very much coming up on the chat, so I'm hoping I've got it right. Um, in terms of being accessed from the north, I'm guessing no. There, there is a road, I believe, that can come right over from over in Upper Allen Street and round, but it wouldn't be the normal route to get to it. Um, I'm hopeful that Mr McLean will come in after me on this. Um, and again, I don't know if there has ever been any discussion about a restriction on that bridge. That would be for our colleagues in um, network, I believe, and or structures with regard to the structure and weight, potential weight limit on the bridge. Um, I'm hopeful that Mr McLean might be able to assist me to respond to you, Councillor Barnacle. Thank you, Anne. Um, in terms of the, the public road network um, in the area, um, Councillor Barnacle, the U115 commences down at the A923 and um, finishes up at the farm um, that's been referred to where the development's been taking place. Um, the public road network does not extend beyond that point. Um, in terms of access from the north, as Anne said, um, there may be um, unofficial routes um, through, but in terms of the public road network, we don't have anything there. Um, so all access to the site in terms of what I have assessed, um, in terms of um, traffic will be coming from the A923 north up to the site. And I hope I've answered your question, but if I haven't, just let me know. No, that's fine. Thanks. Thank you. OK, we have no further questions. Um, so Councillor Wilson has um, re requested to put forward a motion. So uh, over to yourself, Councillor Wilson. Thanks, convener, and apologies to you and the committee members. I slightly jumped the gun on putting in um, a motion, but given the, the vagaries of the system, I thought I would put it in plenty of time, didn't realise it was another two questions pending. Um, my, my motion is quite straightforward, and that is to defer this application um, for further information. And I want further information on a, a number of points. First of all, the, if I call it the vexed question, but there's been a lot of um, issues raised about road access and road safety. Um, I think we need more information on the from the applicant um, and advice from our transport planning people on the possibility of adding in additional passing places um, and also to make some assessment, uh, uh, um, there'll be advice from Mr Fogg whether this is possible or not, of course, um, of the use of the video that we were sent, the YouTube video was very helpful in identifying a number of entrances and field entrances that could, could conceivably be used as either refuges for traffic or passing places. And that seems to be totally ignored in all of the discussion. And I think it's important. It's a reality. They're not passing places, but convenient. It's a reality that on a road like this, they're used um, for that purpose. And they certainly will be used by local folk. So the, there's, first of all, the issue of passing places. And the applicant did say that they would consider in their answer to questions approaching other, I realise the issues about land ownership, but that it's quite possible for them to ask other owners of land about the provision of passing places, which I think would be to everybody's benefit. Secondly, I'm, I have concerns, and I think Councillor McEwen referred to this um, latterly in his questions, about the condition of the bridge. Um, we heard from the applicants that they try hard to make sure that the lorries set up are not 40 tonners, but if they arrive, and drivers try to get round that corner, it's impossible to do that. So therefore, um, that, 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 that these are the two main things I would want on that. Also think we should have sight of the business plan. 
um, because this this application is largely predicated on the business plan and its economic development consequences. And I think the members of the committee should have sight of that that business plan. I accept what the summary report we've had from Mrs. Conclave. I'm not challenged that in any way, but I would like to go over it with a fine tooth comb ourselves. Um, and I think um, we, we've we, we have had, I was going to add in convener issues about the building conditions, but I think we've had a, quite a lot of information about that. So I'll stick to the two bits of information about the business plan and, and assessment and also the, and that may include an S, uh, Scottish Agricultural Colleges or whatever the equivalent is now of, of the assessment of the business plan as well. Um, uh, just want to add that point. Um, I'll, I'll stick to these two, two reasons for uh, or issues about asking for more information. Yes, thank, thank you, Councillor Wilson. Um, thank you for putting that forward. Do you have a seconder? Is there anybody uh, willing to second the um, the deferral? Convener, I put I put a note in the chat box to that effect. Okay, I'm sorry, Councillor Barnacle. I'm not getting anything from you, but uh, you're happy to second that. Yes. OK, is there anything you wish to add? No, I agree with Councillor Wilson. OK, um, Mr Fogg, could you come in and you see if you put a comment up? Yes. And then we'll go through the other um, amendments that come forward. Thank you. Convener, just before we proceed further with uh, uh, Councillor Wilson's motion uh, and any other amendment may come forward, um, in terms of the competency of what's being asked for, I note know, he's describing it as two, namely, uh, in relation to road access and road safety, and that it includes also concern, his concerns about the condition of the bridge uh, and the limitations of it, and separately for additional information in relation to the business plan and economic benefits. Uh, there, there's no, uh, I have no um, problems in relation to his the second part of his request there about additional information about the economic benefits uh, and uh, site of the business plan subject to any necessary redaction perhaps uh, for commercial confidentiality that we uh, offer to, to, to all applicants and uh, that's something that planning would have to, to advise on later uh, however um, road access and road safety are fine as far as it goes but in relation to the particular uh, request that Councillor Wilson has for more information about the possibility of passing places, um, I think we have to have uh, regard to the fact that the applicant and his agent have both said that the passing places that have already been consented lie within the ground over which he has control and that any additional ground um, is uh, in land out with his ownership. Um, and I do think that, well, I'll put it more strongly, I don't think it would be reasonable to um, require the applicant to come forward with proposals for uh, providing additional passing places on land over which he does not have control uh, and which would be dependent upon uh, the consent that he could not secure uh, from a diff uh, an additional uh, landowner. I mean, it might come forward uh, if it was adjourned anyway, um, if the applicant was able to, on a voluntary basis, have those discussions and fortuitously establish that there was um, the possibility of these being provided. You did hear evidence from the agent that um, given the stance of some neighbouring proprietors, he was not confident that that uh, agreement would be forthcoming. Um, so I, I do have reservations about the reasonableness of expecting this applicant to deliver out with his ownership. Um, additional passing places. Uh, more generally, road access and road safety, yes, that could perhaps be um, elaborated on, although you have had a lot of information from Mr McLean this morning, uh, and no doubt additional information could be given about the bridge, and there's no problem in relation to the, the business plan, but it's specifically for uh, expecting this applicant to deliver on land out with his ownership. I don't think that would be a reasonable expectation to insist upon. I'm content to take Mr. Fogg's advice, convener. I, reluctant, sure. but content. <laughs> Put it <that> way. <laughs> no, I, I understand that. Uh, okay, and Councillor Barnacle, are, are you uh, in agreement with that too? Well, I understand where Mr. Fogg is coming from, but um, one of the reasons for seconding the deferral was for the roads department to look at again to see if there's any further measures that could be undertaken. So if, if, for example, the Roads Department in a further review assessed that 
further passing places would be desirable, that may influence further discussion. That's all I would say in response. Uh, I understand that. Um, I'm just, as we've had legal advice, that that may not be, that, that might not um, be, be possible, be, be, sent, be the best way to go. Um, I'm not sure what you're asking us to do. Sorry for my hesitancy. Councillor Wilson has put forward a, uh, a motion to defer, which is now based on the economic um, uh, proposals that are attached. Are you saying that you're no longer willing to second his motion that now that that roads have been removed? Convener, before, before Councillor Barnacle responds, sorry to interrupt. Sure. And, and Mr Fogg made it quite clear it was appropriate to raise road safety concerns yes. and get further information on them, which Councillor Barnacle I think was referring to, to ask the road yeah. service to, to look at this again, the passing yeah, places. Sorry. We can't aim to look at it. We cannot um, uh, impel the, the applicant to do it, although they may, it was sorry. referred was discussed, so it's 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 a, a material consideration, and um, for us that we can ask the, the applicant to consider that we can make them consider it. And um, I understand that, and that's my point of acceptance of what Mr. Fogg was saying. But there's still the issue about the bridge, and there's still a a, a, a material issue about road safety that I think Mr. Fogg said it was appropriate for us to raise that with our road 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 safety colleagues. Or sorry, road, planning road planning colleagues. Sorry, I understand. Thank you very much indeed for that, that clarity. Um, OK, thank you very much. And, and you're happy with that, Councillor Barnacle? Yes. OK, thank you. OK, so we have a, a motion and a second. And um, we also have an amendment from Councillor Illingworth. And Councillor Illingworth, would you um, come forward with your amendment? Thank you, Convener. Uh, I'm happy to propose that we accept this planning application. I think there's, there's th two big benefits. First of all, it's going to bring a beautiful, beautiful building back to life. And I, and I happen to state a similar um, steading development recently. And it was a very quiet place. It was, there was not a huge amount of traffic. It was a similar size to this. Um, uh, it was accessed by narrow roads and people were respectful and I think generally tourists to to the Highlands and, and Persia are respectful and and careful with the environment. So it's going to bring 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 a building back to life. It's all also going to bring economic development, uh, create jobs, create economic activity and and while I understand that residents will have con concerns about the safety of the road. Uh, I am comforted by the hard work and all the efforts of the road department to look at all the different angles and to examine the capacity of the road. So I, I would uh, move that we give permission for this development to go ahead. Thank you, Councillor Ellingworth. Um, Councillor James, just to, you have put forward an amendment, but they both come through at the same time. So I don't know if this is an additional amendment or whether it was an, an amendment to approve. No, mine is the complete opposite to Councillor Ellingworth's. Thank you. OK, then in that case, um, I will second Councillor Ellingworth um, and then we'll come to uh, to, to Councillor James. So um, in, in seconding the, um, the approval of this, um, We've all had a lot of information over the last uh, few days from residents, from the officers, um, all, and also today on the deputations, we've, we've had a lot of information coming forward. And, um, you know, as convener of planning and development, I get, I get a lot of people, especially developers and, and people who live in the countryside, saying that what, what we do is very much town centric. It's, it's very um, focused on increasing development in lots of areas um, that already have large areas of development and that we don't do what we should be doing in rural areas and we have an application coming forward that will do exactly that and now we have um, opposition to it which I totally understand. Um, but 
we've listened to our experts. We've had um, surveys being brought forward regarding road safety. And when we look at what's nationally required, and, and as already been said by Mr. McLean, when we're looking at a hundred um, journeys on, on single track roads in an hour, and we're looking at an average of 16 with this development, we're not even close to the concerns levels. We're just close to what people in the area have concerns over. And, and I understand that is a concern, but it's not based on what we in planning have to take into consideration. We have had a, um, an economic development report put forward to our officers that has been assessed by our officers, that has been looked at and, and, and word into, and they're in agreement that the economic development uh, benefits to the area are, are included and are, are worth our support. I cannot see any reason based on planning that we should refuse this. And therefore, even though the local community are concerned and even though they have issues on transport, they have been addressed. So um, I cannot see a reason for us to refuse or defer this application. And because of that, I will second Councillor Illingworth's uh, amendment to approve this application. Okay, Councillor James, um, you have now an amendment to refuse. So um, over to you. Yes, yes. Um, thanks, convener. Uh, unlike yourself, I can see several reasons why we shouldn't allow this uh, policy, our own policies, policy 1A, uh, where it says the development must contribute positively to the quality of the surroundings, built and natural environment. I don't think this is a positive contribution. It goes on to say that it should create and improve links within and where practical beyond the site. It neither does that either. Policy 1B, in particular, uh, policy 1B uh, brackets A, it says create a sense of identity by developing a coherent structure of streets and buildings safely accessible from its surroundings. We've heard today uh, several from, from several um, points of view uh, that the access to this site is certainly not a safe access. I'm very, very familiar with it. I, I, I do live in Kinloch and, I'm, uh, and I know this isn't a case of nimbyism, it's a case of safety uh, and, and worry. Uh, particularly at the bottom end near the A923 going through the village. Um, it, it's a thriving village. The other thing that I have a, an issue with is the number of trips. While there's uh, up to, 11, I think it's 11 in total properties, you know, holiday accommodation. These people have to eat. To eat, they'll have to visit a shop. There isn't a shop in Kinloch. And as we've told, this is a two kilometre road. They're going to have to drive to the shops to get their shopping and stuff like that. It's, it's going to be extra trips. The road at the bottom is particularly unsafe. Um, I don't know if anybody did see the, um, the YouTube video. Uh, it doesn't you don't get a sense of a drop off on the left hand side of the road as you're going up the hill and also during the winter it it is as you've heard from from um one of the the uh, not the applicant from uh, mr andrew today that uh it's icy and very very difficult to get up and down so for those reasons um i i would uh, propose that we refuse this application Okay, Councillor Braun, um, your chat function is now working. I see you're willing to second to your comments on seconding, Councillor James. Thank you, uh, convener. It's nice to know technology finally catches up with me. Uh, yes, I am prepared to uh, second Councillor James on this. Uh, I, I take the notes at uh, the points he's raised. I'd like to add some more of my own, if I may. Um, much of this, I think, depends on policy eight uh, on this uh, this application, and I'm I'm concerned, I, I, and I'll stand corrected by Councillor James and Councillor McEwen because they they live a lot closer than I, but I don't see that there are any other businesses that may ec gain economically from this site. Um, there's no pubs or cafes or restaurants or tourist attractions in that area. There is a hotel nearby, 
But I would suggest that their, the economic benefit for them would be if people stay there. And that's obviously not going to happen with this. So I would con I'm concerned that I think policy 8E uh, is not being complied with. That's my first point. I'm concerned about the people who live on this road already. Um, and they've raised obviously various points. And I think it's important to note that they did not, um, in any of the objections I've seen, uh, complain about the, the, the concept of what's being done here. It's all back down to this particular road. Um, they they live here and they've bought into this, this area on a farm track or farm road. Let's be, let's be honest, it's a road, it's tarmac, so it's called a road. Um, and they would be a reasonable anticipation of farm traffic. Um, but they obviously are concerned about the safety of visitors and their own safety because many of them as, as councillor james and, and mr barrett said they walk on the road they walk their dogs on the road they cycle on the road they run on the road and there are blind bends on this road um so i, I i'd also raise the point that perhaps policy 8c is not being complied with but it all comes back down to the road and uh, and that's the I feel a little bit sorry for for, for uh, Mr. Gullen and his agent because uh, they, they've put a good case forward for what they want to do but it is down to this road um, and this is a core objection to everybody um, it's I would be I would, would not call it a dangerous road that would be, be wrong to call that and be cautious about using that term but it is a difficult road I drove it just uh, last week uh, part of the way up, uh, it is. Uh, there are blind bends. There is no real proper pass in places. In, uh, and if you meet somebody, and luckily I didn't, uh, you'd have to find your way back, reverse, or hopefully the other person might reverse for you. Um, if you're going up, you're always going to be reversing downhill. Uh, you could reverse uh, very close to or into a blind bend, which I think is 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 dangerous to do. Um, I'd also draw members' attention to an email from Councillor Shires, uh, which she circulated to all of us. Uh, this really added a, a meeting that she had with former Councillor Bob Ellis uh, some years ago when there was a prospect of using this route into a development beyond the farm. Uh, and at that time, our own road safety officers declared that this was not um, uh, not a suitable road because of the blind bends. Now, the traffic involved in that time was lorries and HGVs. And I appreciate that. That's different from cars. But it was the blind bends which was the problem, not the vehicles themselves. So cars, lawyers, HGVs, it's the same problem. And on that basis, and, and, and as, I, as I questioned uh, Mr. McLean, got the name right this time, um, the increase in traffic will increase the probability of people meeting on the road, people who don't know the road. Uh, that could be in icy conditions, not necessarily snow, but it could be black ice, whatever, which makes this a difficult, a difficult road. Um, I appreciate that these comments are might bees, there may be, there are possibilities, of course they are. Um, but that's that against um, road safety. And I think, uh, in my opinion, road safety must come first. And therefore, I'm of the opinion that this doesn't comply with policy 8G and policy 60B, paragraph A. Uh, thank you, Karina. It's obviously now obviously over to Mr. Fogg to, to see whether we're competent here. But um, but thank you for your time, Karina. Thank you for the moment. Thank you. Uh, Convener, so I, I, I was following Councillor Braun just until the, the very end. Um, I think what we first have to do is establish from Councillor James whether or not he would be willing to have his second amendment expanded to incorporate those additional reasons that were being advanced by Councillor Braun to accept that as a valid seconding of the second amendment. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I was going to suggest that. Thank you very much for jumping in. <laughs> there we go. No, we're happy. Um, Councillor James, are, are you willing to add um, 8A, 8C, 8G and 60B onto your um, um, refusals? Uh, absolutely, uh, Kavina. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd also, uh, Mr Fogg, uh, probably worth mentioning the housing in the countryside, uh, which is also uh, for all proposals uh, little two which is a, a, suc a successful sustainable place um, item two uh, should encourage uh, should not encourage unsustainable travel patterns I would suggest it probably include that as well if Councillor Braun's happy with that as well sorry Councillor Braun Oh, sorry, just unmuting. Yes, I'm, I'm happy with that as well. If uh, Councillor James wants that. 
Okay, Mr. Fogg, can you advise um, um, just to confirm as you did with the uh, with the motion? Is that competent, and uh, are are you happy with that to go forward? Can you just bear with me for one moment, Kavir, to check something? Certainly. Um, I wonder really quick if um, uh, Anne was able to uh, advise me um, on the um, applicability of the housing and the countryside policy for a um, tourist related proposal. Uh, is it still assessed against the housing and the countryside policy? No, it's not. No. Um, uh, you're looking okay. at it. Well, you've got the um, the policy on Charlie's timeshare is a possibility. And um, beyond that, it's all under policy eight. Yes, that, that, that's what I thought, Councillor James. Um, the, okay, of, quite, the, yeah. I was so, only belt and braces, to be honest yeah. with you, Jeff, so uh, quite happy to have that out. So it was, uh, I have the additions by Councillor uh, Braun as being um, uh, council, uh, policy 8C, um, 8G. And sorry, the final one, Councillor Braun, was Sorry, sorry, uh, Mr. Fogg. It was, it, it was 8C, 8E, 8G, and then policy 60B, paragraph A. Does that makes sense. 8C, E, 8C, 8E, 8G, and policy 60B, paragraph A. And I can't think Councillor James put in uh, uh, 1A and 1B. Yes. 1B, yeah. yeah. Those. Yeah, I, I take it, Councillor Braun, for count, uh, policy it's 60B A, uh, designed for the safety and convenience of all potential users. Is that what you're referring to? Yes, that's yeah, what. Just sorry, Jeff, I'm using it. I'm just it's 60, 60, yeah, 60B A. No, so yes. 60B be designed for the safety and convenience of all potential users. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Convener, those are competent uh, grounds, um, and I know there's a consensus between both Councillor James and Braun, so um, that now yeah. constitutes the second amendment. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Mr. Fogg. Okay, so we have a motion to defer. We have uh, an approval from, um, from, sorry, motion to defer from Councillor Wilson, seconded by Councillor Barnacle. Um, an amendment to approve from Councillor Illingworth, seconded by myself, Councillor McCall, and a refusal, um, a motion, uh, sorry, an amendment to refuse from Councillor James, seconded by Councillor Braun. Um, as per standing orders, I believe we're going to move um, one of the amendments against the other, and then that amendment will go against the motion. Um, so, um, Danny, um, Mr. Williams, can you just confirm I got that right and to take us through that process, please? And the same with uh, Mr. Fogg, just to confirm. Mr. McEwen, your comment. Thank you, Mr. Sorry, that was a mute. Um, sorry, the, just to comment on the amendments, you know, I have concerns with policy AG about the safety of the road. I think the officers have shown that capacity and travel is acceptable on that type of road, but not necessarily the, the safety of the road. Uh, okay, sorry, Councillor McCune, policy. I don't I don't mean to be precise, sorry. but normally what happens is that once we've got confirmation from uh, from Mr. Williams and from Mr. Fogg, we uh, um, Councillor Wilson is allowed to sum up since he put forward the motion. Um, so there's a few bits and pieces, and then we'll have the comments. So I just wanted to make sure we were doing everything correctly, considering we've got new standing orders. I just want to make sure that what I said regarding the motion and the two. Um, amendments are, are correct. So sorry if I was unclear on that. Just let's just get that cleared up and then we'll open it up for comments, etc. So um, is that correct? <laughs> the two um, amendments against each other then going against the motion? Uh, yes, uh, yes, convene, that is correct um, in what you say. I'll run through the whole procedure very, very quickly uh, just for the benefit of everyone. So this is in line with standing order 21 of the um, standing orders of the council 
So what we'll is we've got the the two amendments um, from Councillor Longworth and seconded by yourself, convener, um, to uh, approve and the amendment from Councillor James, seconded by Councillor Braun, uh, to refuse the details which have been run through by Mr Fogg previously. Um, once we've held that uh, roll call vote, the um, the amendment with the most votes will become the substantive amendment and we will have another roll call vote and that will be against the motion as was proposed by Councillor Wilson and seconded by Councillor Barnacle. Uh, thank you Danny. Can I just have one piece of uh, extra clarification? Um, we will have comments which I'm happy to do. Um, I just want to confirm when Councillor Wilson um, does a sum up, is that prior to the motion against the amendment or is that just after the comments? Um, yeah, I, I mean, general practice has been that that would be, we'd have all summing up and comments prior to uh, both. Any vote? Both votes. Fine. OK, thank you. I just wanted to, there's new standing orders for anyone listening if they're wondering why I'm, I'm slightly uh, nervous about this, but there's new standing orders and I just want to make sure that we're doing everything properly as per those new standing orders. OK, so now comments. My apologies, um, Councillor McEwen, um, if you would like to do your um, uh, any comments from any councillors and then we will ask um, Councillor Wilson to sum up. Thank you. Convener. Um, thank you, thank you Convener. Oh, Sorry, okay. If, if councillors, please, could you use the chat rather than just speaking because it does get a bit confusing. Councillor Barnacle, you have a comment to make prior to Councillor McEwen's comment. No, I put, a, I put something in the chat box on a point okay. of order, which I don't think you've seen. No, I don't. I'm not getting anything from you. My apologies. Your point of order is... Well, I just wanted to clarify if we're putting one amendment against the other, I can vote accordingly, which doesn't prejudice my vote uh, following on. I don't have to abstain. I can vote on one of the amendments. Is that correct? My understanding is yes, um, but again, we'll, we'll just double check. Um, Mr. Williams, is that, that, that it won't prejudice any future? No, no, no I'm, I was pretty sure about that. Uh as with every roll call vote we do, uh, members do have the option there to abstain should they feel that's the course of action they wish to take. But no, it doesn't doesn't prejudice any decision on the and on a subsequent roll call vote. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Sorry, and thank you again for your patience, Councillor McEwen. So, Councillor McEwen, your comment. It's not a problem, convener. I completely agree with you that these things have done properly and in, in order. Uh, my, my comment regarding this application is that I do think it's a development that would be useful. I do think it's a development that will uh, could stimulate the wider economy and maybe not the economy of Kinloch itself uh, and could be in, in addition to the tourist options within the area, especially being on the Catherine Trail itself. So I think the application has, has great merit in itself. However, the rural roads are roads that come about through time, uh, through cart and horse and people walking to councils to market them in the 1960s. And these rural roads go where these rural roads go and they twist and turn and they go around things. And you know, farmers have put drainage ditches down the sides of these roads, which is which is very suitable to manage the water and runoff. And it's comes to a point though where our modern use of these roads using vehicles and volumes comes to a point where I think for this road, especially the bottom section, is is not safe. Um, the, the number of vehicles and the number of vehicle journeys isn't really that big an issue, I don't think. Uh, it's actually, it only takes two vehicles to meet each other. It only takes one vehicle reversing inappropriately or Correctly to to cause problems and harm either to vehicles or, or to people, and I think that then the bottom half of this road is is, is unsafe, uh, and that's the, the main reason I will be voting the the way I am uh, on this current application as it stands. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Simpson. Your comment, please. Thank you very much indeed, Convener. Um, Members will know that where this is a local review body and it, and it isn't, we would have an option to uh, defer uh, for a site visit 
and in some respects, this is an excellent example here of a of a, a, an a, um, application that would benefit, I think, fr from a site visit, uh, and it might be something we should think about in, in, in the future. Uh, and further to that, I would take the opportunity to compliment Mrs. Cornliffe and her decision to cycle to look at this, and would recommend that all councillors and officers uh, do this in future. Not only would it be good for our general health, but you do get a very much much better idea of what's going on from a bike than you do from a car or indeed from a photograph. But I think it, it is unfortunate with um, applications such as this that there is not the opportunity for a site visit. Thank you very much, Councillor Simpson. There are no more comments coming up in my chat function, so I will then uh, pass oh, the mic basically over to Councillor Wilson for a sum up. Thanks, convener. Um, I'm not going to take up any more time with the committee. I think we've had a, a substantial amount of questions and discussion, and therefore I propose we move to the vote. <clears throat> and thank you very much indeed, Councillor Wilson. Um, OK, so um, Mr Williams, over to yourself. It is the Amendment 1 against Amendment 2. Um, so if you could take us through and equally, if, um, if Mr Bog is there, he could do what needs to be done. Thank you. Yeah, Danny, if I just start with the second amendment, and I think given the time that we spent on it, members will appreciate if I give an abridged account of the full terms of the second amendment. But the second amendment is advanced by Councillor James, uh, and that is seconded by Councillor Braun, which is to refuse the application on the grounds that the proposal uh, before uh, the committee is uh, contrary to policies 1A, 1BA, um, policy 8C, 8E, 8G and 60BA of uh, the current local development plan. Uh, the first uh, amendment uh, was by Councillor Illingworth, um, which was to approve the application in accordance with the Director of Planning and Development's uh, report of handling, and that amendment is seconded by, by the convener. And I'll pass you over now to Danny Williams. Yes, thank you, Jeff. Um, so, members, when I call your name, if you can let me know whether you'll be voting for the First Amendment, which was uh, proposed by Councillor Illingworth, or the Second Amendment, which was proposed by Councillor James. Councillor Barnacle. Second Amendment. Councillor Braun. Second Amendment. Councillor Brock. Second Amendment. Councillor Illingworth. First Amendment. Councillor James. Second Amendment. Councillor McCall. First Amendment. Councillor McEwen. Second Amendment. Second Amendment. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Uh, Councillor Simpson. Second Amendment. <clears throat> Council Waters. Abstain. Yeah. And Council Wilson. Second Amendment. Thank you. OK, so members, I have that down as two votes in favour of the First Amendment, seven in favour of the Second Amendment, and with one abstention too. So now I will proceed. The Second Amendment, which was proposed by Council James, will now become the substantive amendment and that will go against the motion which was proposed by Council Wilson. So same process again when I call your name if you can let me know you'll be voting for the motion or what is now the substantive amendment. Council Barnacle. Motion. Council Braun. Amendment. Council Brock. Motion. Councillor Illingworth. Motion. Councillor James. Amendment. Councillor McCall. Motion. Councillor McEwen. Amendment. Councillor Simpson. Motion. Councillor Waters. Motion. 
And Councillor Wilson. Motion. Okay, members. Um, so I made that seven votes in favour of the motion and three in favour of the amendment. Jeff, can I just confirm with you that's what you've got as well? Yes, it is, Danny. Okay, thank you very much. Therefore, the motion will carry. Okay, thank you, everybody. Um, that was a very detailed, very well discussed and um, in-depth uh, application that came forward. Um, and I, I, I know that this now takes it forward as a deferral for more information. Um, so thank you very much indeed for everybody's attention and um, um, for, for bringing it to this point. So thank you. Can I just add one wee point just at the end? I do accept what Councillor Simpson said in his comments. But can I please reiterate to the committee that the in planning and development committee, we don't have to wait for an organised site visit. It is anybody who wants to go and visit a site can do so at any time. You do not have to wait until it is organised and deferred through the committee. Um, I have regularly travelled around Perth and Kinross in my car, on my own, to have a look at sites if I have a concern, and I did it with this one. So um, we do not have to wait, and I really do want to reiterate that it isn't necessary to wait for us all to go in a group. So thank you very much indeed, everybody, for your attention, for your time, and uh, we will see you all in a month. Thank you.